over 50 million views. You're listening to The Joe Cronin Show. The Joe Cronin Show. The Joe Cronin Show. I hope you hang your mother. This country sucks. This place sucks. CNN masturbated all fucking day. Dude, I will eat your fucking asshole out and then spit it into your mouth, baby bird style. Who wants to go? Call the show. I'll fuck your ass! (laughs) I want to kill myself! The Joe Cronin Show. If you ain't hyped, it's time to get hyped. Because it's Sunday night. Beat the clock. And of course... There's been a lot of stupid shit said today that I've heard in the IWC, YWC, whatever you call it. Morons out there. million views. You're listening to The Joe Cronin Show. The Joe Cronin Show. All right. I'm not going to waste any more time. The alert went out. I get it. We wait for the alerts to go out all the time. It takes forever. And you want to sit there. But if you're watching on replay, you can just fast forward a little bit. And hell, drop a super thanks down below if you can. If you're watching this on replay, uh, you're going to want to get your video recorder ready for this show. You're going to be wanting to record this one. Probably. Maybe not. I don't know, but probably. You're going to want to get the timestamps ready. Tonight is Beat the Clock. I have subject matters that I'm going to go over. And we'll have 30 minutes of a show. Or we'll have a 10-hour show. You never know how long it's going to go. It could go 10 hours. It could go 30 minutes. It could go whatever. You don't know. All righty. We'll see how long people want to make it tonight, but I got stuff to say, so that's regardless. I've got at least 30 minutes of time to fill up here on Beat the Clock, a special Sunday night edition of Beat the Clock tonight in the chat. What's up? How you guys doing? This is the greatest week in wrestling history, guys, or the greatest week in WWE history, according to JD and according to several other people. I use him as the biggest example, but a lot of people said, oh, it's the best week ever. This is the best day in history of wrestling. What are you, fucking retarded? What kind of fucking retards are we talking about here? I'm going to, I like, listen, I normally don't go after people who are saying stupid shit because I say stupid shit and a lot of people say stupid shit, but my God, bro, some of the people in the YWC and the IWC right now are fucking full mongoloids. They are without a doubt stupid. Like, they contradict themselves around every corner. It's like they're make, they're making up make-believe. I, I You know, I don't exactly know why they're making up make-believe, but they're making make-believe happen, let me tell you that. I got stuff to talk about tonight. I got a list of stuff. I got... I'm going to tear... I'm going to tear John Grisham's asshole open so hard, he's going to beg me to hire him and fuck him, Okay. I'm going to tear John Grisham's asshole open so wide. He's going to beg me to work him. He's going to think Sonny Kiss raped him. That's how big I'm going to tear that asshole up tonight. So, John Grisham, get ready, brother. Get ready, pal. All right, Joe Biden, get ready. 
Vince McMahon is gone. People are celebrating. Fine. I agree. WWE has been... This, this is the best thing to happen to WWE in the last five to ten years. No doubt about it. Maybe since the PG era. Maybe. But this is not the best week in... This is not the best week in fucking wrestling or in WWE ever. This is just not the best week ever in wrestling. If you think that, say that, insinuate that, and certainly if you put that in the title of a video, you, my friend, are without a doubt a fucking idiot. A mongoloid who has just outed themselves as a fake rage person who wants to get donations and money and make stuff up just to get angry so people will follow and whatever the fuck. And you're paid by Tony Khan, most likely, right? Most likely paid by Tony Khan. Best, the best week ever in WWE history. Dude, I could pick any week from 1998, and it was better than this week in WWE. I could pick any week from 1999, and it would be better than this week in WWE history. I could pick any week from the year 2000, 2001. Hell, the week Chris Benoit killed his family is a better week than this week in WWE history. All right? So not on my watch will you start tweeting out shit like this bullshit that I'm hearing from people, bro. Absolutely not. This is Ryback level retardism that I'm hearing from some people. You know what I mean? People are fucking make-believe delusional fake people in the YWC and the IWC. I have seen it from multiple different people writing it everywhere. People like Brian Zane think it's the greatest thing ever. You know, I other people, you know, I'm going to go over the group of people that think it's so great because it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to talk about Darby Allen getting attacked at Comic-Con. I'm going to talk about Star Trek Picard later on, way later on. Season 3 for like very quick second because I know a lot of people aren't Star Trek people, but it'll be a quick second. Uh there's a giant uh, ice melting in Greenland, uh 18 billion. It's going to be fucking huge to look at that. We're going to talk about John Gresham being a midget. Tony Khan uh, probably being on, uh, you know, probably on crack. But, hey, man, Tony Khan is the lone gunman now, baby. The lone gunman in wrestling right now is Tony Khan. Without a doubt, that's exciting. I get it. And I got, I got, I got the claw here, too, by the way. I got my best friend right now, the fucking claw. This claw has been in the fridge for a year, bro. Do you understand that, dude? This has been in the fucking fridge for a year, and it still tastes beautiful. Dude, I'm drinking this shit that's been in the fridge for a year. I checked the born on date underneath it. This fucking bitch was born last July, and it's now this July, and it's it tastes and smells like it just came out of the pussy hole, bro. This shit, ca this shit just came out of the pussy hole just now, bro. Dude, let me ask you something else. I, you know, specifically, I saw a lot of people bitching on Twitter that Bruce Pritchard hasn't been fired yet. These same people are calling this the best week ever in WWE history, including Catman in New York. The greatest week ever, yet they are bitching that Bruce Pritchard is still in the WWE. They're like, nothing's really changed because Bruce Pritchard's still there. So until Bruce is fired, this isn't even real. Well, then how is it the greatest fucking week? If it's if the if it's not real, then why are you saying it's the greatest time and greatest week ever? You fucking idiot. You idiots, it's not just one guy, it's a whole lot of people saying this. You fucking morons. Bro, what are people talking about? Dude, oh, it's the it's the greatest week ever cuz Vince is gone. But Vince isn't really gone because Bruce Pritchard is still in charge, so nothing really has changed. Well, so it's not the greatest week. Oh, Vince McMahon was a sexist who was, uh, you know, he treated the women like shit. He didn't care about the women at all. But but I, I'm going to, uh, Alexa Bliss doesn't know how to fuck. Dude, I have so many examples of so many people across the YWC and the wrestling internet marks everywhere, and people saying this is the greatest week ever. It is not 
the greatest week ever. It just isn't. Let's listen to this. About it. Get Vince McMahon. We need to celebrate Vince McMahon. We need to talk about Vince McMahon's achievements. We need to thank you, Vince. Fuck Vince McMahon. And fuck him. Kevin Dunn. You wouldn't be here without Vince McMahon, you midget. You fucking midget fuck. First time that Dunn has spoken disparagingly. This isn't the first time that Dunn has spoken disparagingly about the looks of a female. You've spoken disparagingly about the fucking looks of a female. Right? And she does nothing. She does nothing. She's just... I guarantee you she's one of those women that just lays there and just takes it. Nothing. She does nothing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in bed with Alexa Bliss, man? That Dunn has spoken disparagingly about the looks of a female in the WWE. It's all just bullshit out of these people. They're all fake. I am excited to see where the WWE can go now that Vince McMahon has gone. Thank God, Vince McMahon, and hopefully other people, and this makes the company good because WWE hasn't really been that good since maybe the year 2007 and eight, and that wasn't even the greatest, but it certainly has been a terrible last 10 years. The last 10 years, that's the reason why I started this show. Do you understand I was loosely ranting about WWE for five years before getting so angry that I said, I've got so much to say and so much to talk about that I'm going to do a sports radio post show of WWE because I could break this stuff down for hours after it's over, the way things are going. And that's why this channel launched in August of 2012, almost 10 years to this day that we launched this channel specifically because I said, this is it. This is the worst shit that I've seen in my life. And I watched 1993 and four and five of the WWE. Okay. Okay. So you can go and listen to Dr. Disrespect you all you want all fucking day. Drive his fucking little car. Oh my God. I figured out how to make a green screen effect. Oh my God. I fucking know how to make a green screen effect. I think I'm Dr. Disrespect. (laughs) You can fucking imitate Dr. Disrespect all you want, but that ain't ever going to make you 5 foot 10, bro. You ain't never going to be 6 foot 5 with a banging wife and a million bucks like Dr. Disrespect, so you can pretend to be Dr. Disrespect all you want, but all you are is a midget with a green screen. I can do it too. Anyone can do it too. I got news for you, mister. I'm an Atlanta Braves fan, even though I grew up in New York and should be a Yankees fan, but I like the Braves because it pissed off all the people around me. What a pleasant person that seems to be. I wanted to be a Braves fan to piss off everyone around me. That's nice, you fucking weirdo. Dude, you come down to Boston. My, I'll say this to my former co-host, uh, Catman in New York. You come down to Boston, motherfucker, and I'll chop you up and I'll use you as my sandbags in the next cornhole tournament in Foxborough. Okay, bro? Anyway, I just want to tell you, bro, this is fucking the fakest shit I've ever fucking heard in my life. This is the fakest fucking shit I've ever heard in my life. The fucking best week in WWE fucking history. Dude, the best week in WWE history. What kind of fucking crack, what kind of dick do I got to suck and smoke so that I can go ahead and think like you do? I would love to think like you do. What kind of cum do I have to swallow? What kind of dick Do I have to blow? What's in the fucking New York water? That's what I want to know. I'm Joe Cronin. I'd like to know it. We're doing beat the clock. We're going to put 30 minutes on the clock, like I said. Yeah, it's just like Bruce Blitz's. Remember his little screens where he looked like a little tiny midget idiot, Bruce? And we made fun of Bruce for it. He looked like a fucking idiot. Remember when we made fun of Bruce for that? Oh, my God. He looked like a fucking moron. He, oh my God, it was so funny when he made that green screen thing. I remember that. I remember being like, ha ha, what a fucking, what is this dude? 
I think he took down all his wrestling content, though. But yeah, he had this tiny little desk. Oh my God, I wish it was still up. He he got rid of it. He must have known how terrible it looked, dude. He got rid of it, dude. He used to sit down at this little fucking desk. Um, I wish that it was still up on YouTube. But they uh they he took down all the stuff he ever had. He took down all the stuff he ever had, bro. But anybody that ever saw uh, Bruce Blitz's content at one point, this motherfucker, he sat behind this tiny little desk on a green screen. It looked like his little head was coming over the desk. Oh, it was so bad. I mean, I had a green screen back in the day too, but I got rid of it after a while because I just, I, I found it looks better to have a real background, a real studio setup. But, uh, you know, obviously, actually, I never, mine, mine never recovered once I uh, had the water damage. I should fix mine though and make it look a little bit better. But uh, that being said, what what a goof, man. W what a weird thing. And this isn't just about one person. This is about a whole lot of people on Twitter today who are like, oh, the best week ever. Vince is gone. Listen, it is a great time, potentially. This is this is great news that finally, like, we might actually be, wrestling could be good again in WWE. But there is there is no argument. This is not the greatest week in WWE history. It is not. It is not the best week in WWE history. I don't care what you say. Absolutely not the best week in WWE history. No way. Fucking any any week from 19 anything is better than this week in wrestling. What the fuck was good this week in wrestling? In WWE rather. Absolutely no. The timer is started. 30 minutes on the timer. Oh my God, bro. I'm about to lose my fucking mind today. I was ready to blow up on everybody. People saying this. And you know what? You know why I got pissed off? Because, you know, people repeat the things these people say. You know, and they go, it was the best week ever. No, it was. My whole Twitter feed's full, full of like, oh, it was the best week ever. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't was not the best week ever. The week fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin threw the fucking title into the water. The week Stone Cold fucking Milkomania in the grocery store with Booker T. Mankind going off the fucking hell in a cell. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Degeneration X, the week of WrestleMania 14, fucking anything. Every single WrestleMania week from WrestleMania like, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Like, dude, what? This is not the best week in WWE history. Everything we know and love is from the WWE mostly. So there's no chance, no chance in hell. You've got no chance in hell that this was the best week in WWE history. That may be the dumbest thing that I've heard today. And I've heard other people say it. With how many fucking riders they got backstage. I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. This is the then greatest fuck off. day in the history. Fuck off. Give a fuck. I said this. I said this on Friday. I'm not here to talk about what Vince McMahon did and the accolades of Vince McMahon and how influential he is and this and that. Vince McMahon hated professional wrestling. I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. This is the greatest day in the history of... Of the company. Because now we... No, it's not! No, it's not! No, 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 no! No, it's not! No, it's not! That is not true! It is not the greatest day in the history of the fucking company! You are a fucking retard delusional fuck to have said that! Vince McMahon. This is the greatest day in the history of the company. Be no! No, it's not. No, it's not. You tell me why. Tell me how it's the greatest day in the history. Because now we could see potential growth and the growth that is there. The growth? What the growth? The, the, what the 11 million viewers are coming back? What growth? Degeneration X, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, The Rock, they're coming back. It's WrestleMania 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 again. Is that what's happening? 
This is the greatest day in the history? Get the fuck out of here, you fucking automatic Mustang driving idiot. You drive an automatic fucking Mustang! And you have a fucking automatic AEW paid brain. You are paid by AEW. You're paid by AEW. You're paid by AEW. You are a shill fake, just like Bruce Blitz, who admitted that it was all a fake rage. All a fucking fake rage. You fucking mark! You're a mark. You fucking mark! And the growth that is there, the hopeful growth that is there, is tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. And I said this. I I agree that there is that there there is hopeful growth. I agree that there is hopeful growth. JD really agrees that there's hopeful growth. He hopes he grows down there. I will grow down there. That's why I have a wife. But let me just tell you something. We all hope that the WWE now gets better. There's no denying that. But I have a major problem with all these people coming out and saying that this is the best thing that's ever happened. What kind of crack cocaine cock are you on? What kind of payroll by AEW are you on? How much is Tony Khan paying you to disparage the WWE? How much? 24 minutes left on the clock. Every $5 is two minutes. And there is a special amount that I know about. I know what it is. And it's worth an extra hour on top of whatever you do. So just FYI. Donations are on. Super chats are available if you want to do it. I know he's going to get like $1,000 tonight. I'm probably not. Uh, he's going to come on YouTube and say this was the greatest week in WWE. Hey, guys, this is the greatest week in WWE history. Now you're going to give me $2,000. That's what's going to happen with him tonight. I don't understand that. Hey, it's the greatest week in, in, in WWE history. Oh, thank you for the $100. Thanks for the $5,000 donation. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You're fucking, what? Are you retarded, people? Who is retarded out there? I don't get it. But, you know, speaking of donation links, there it is. Un unfucking believable. Unfucking believable. That what kind of tardism is floating out there in this world at this point? Like, bro, the, this is the greatest week in WWE history? You're on crack. I never do this. Everyone, People have always bashed me like this and bashed me and done videos on me and done things on me. You know, today I was on Twitter and people kept messaging me about this and people kept saying, my opinion, this is the greatest week. And I couldn't figure out why they were saying it. But then I realized that we share a little bit of an audience here with me and a couple other people. And I went, oh, that's where it's coming from. And I said, that's it, bro. I got to say something about this. So I don't normally like to come on and do this. You know, and, and, you know, I know you guys could say, you know, Joe, you were on here the other day gargling cum and drinking and jerking off and you made $600. Yes, you're right. So I'm as guilty as saying dumb things and making donations as well. But the fact of the matter is, man, this is not the greatest week in WWE history. There is no possible way that I believe that. And there is no possible way that mo any, most anybody believes that. Unless they're like 10 years old. Now, if you're 10 years old, this is the greatest in history because you didn't see anything else that happened before 2010 and whatever else unless you saw a highlight and you don't even think it's real or something. I don't know. Maybe if you're a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, or, or like you've only been watching WWE for like three years or something, maybe then you think this was the greatest week in WWE history. But other than that, to me, there's no chance in hell that you could have thought this was the greatest week in WWE history. And John Grisham, I got news for you, brother. You idiot. You absolute moron. You fucking mark! Where are you going to go now? What, are you going to go to Impact? 
John Grisham, you going to go to Impact now, bro? Good job. Oh, I'm done. So dumb. Yeah, Michael Varmont, you think WWE is going to get better than the late 90s? You think so? You think it's going to get better than the late 90s, Michael? You think so? The fuck out of here. It will never be better than that. No way. If it, I, I hope to God it could somehow get there, but I don't think so, bro. What, you ever going to see Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, Stone Cold, The Rock? You ever going <laughs> to... You know what I mean? Like, what? Bro, there is a there is a sliver of chance in hell that that ever happens again, that something like that power comes along ever again in wrestling. I don't need that, though. I just need a great time. I need a good time. I, I need a fun time. I need to be entertained the proper way, like MJF does in AEW and several other people do once in a while. But I'm not asking for the 90s back because that's probably never going to happen again. But all these people on Twitter, man, talking about, oh, it's the greatest week ever, bro. I don't think so. It's the greatest week ever. Absolutely not. And people saying Jonathan Gresham got screwed or something like that. What are you talking about? He's screwed now. He's going to impact. What's he going to do in Impact Wrestling? Oh, I'm going to Impact Wrestling where nobody will see me wrestle. Good job. I'm going to go to Impact Wrestling and maybe nobody will see me wrestle. This will be a great idea. I, mean, I can't wait to go to Impact Wrestling. Good job, John Grisham, you midget. Now, I agree the Tony Khan probably didn't give him any warning. He didn't give him any help. He didn't give any prestige, really. He was just like, get out there, have a 15-minute match, win the title, and boom. And now I, now I don't know about John Grisham claiming that it's, uh, that it's racist or whatever, but, I mean, I'm hearing that people are saying it's racist. Oh, yes, it's racist. Oh. Now, I agree that AEW may see you as pets, no doubt about it, but... Is it really? Are they really racist? They've got black tag team champions, a black TBS women's champion who's undefeated. They had Scorpio Sky. They've got a trans woman who is still here doing things, though she sucks. They've got Sunny Kiss, a fancy boy who dances around and shakes his ass. Quite frankly, makes me think about going by, to be honest. Of course, they only utilize Sunny Kiss when it's Gay Pride Month and they want to waddle her out there to, you know, say that they support things. But, you know, that's, you know, listen, you can't help these people. They, they see minorities as pets. I understand. It's sickening. I get it. It makes me sick, too. But still, there's tons of representation of whatever. It will never be enough for anybody. It doesn't matter. It will never be enough. But they're saying that that's why he's gone because racist Tony Khan. I mean, shouldn't CM Punk have sniffed out racist Tony Khan by now? By the way, Mike Torian, thank you so much for becoming a $25 producer on Patreon. Thank you, Mike. Mike Torian, $25 patron producer. Thank you, Mike. Holy shit, dude. Holy shit. Black Pumpkinhead just became a member. What up? What up, Black Pumpkinhead? Thank you. And that means you are a member for how long? 11 months in a row. You're almost a full year, Black Pumpkin. You're going to unlock all the badges. You're a beast. You raised a piece of shit. Ryback. When they took ALF off the air, did Jonathan Gresham have to give back the costume? Oh. Ryback the Ruffles rapist. Uh, listen, I don't know. I know that Jonathan Grisham said, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. I'm going to Impact Wrestling. Yeah, enjoy that. Enjoy Impact Wrestling. Why didn't you wait around to see what they did with you first? You don't know what was going to happen next. Maybe they were going to bring you up to AEW. Maybe they were going to keep utilizing you in Ring of Honor. I don't know. I If I was... John, these people need managers, like real-life managers. Wrestlers need real-life management. Jonathan Gresham, hit me up, bro. I will work for you. 
All you wrestlers out there that are looking for a manager, give me a call. You need one. You fucking need a manager in real life. I will do it for cheap. Sports agents would charge a lot of money. I'll do it for cheap. Call me up, and I will take care of this for you. You you need a fucking agent because you need an agent to say to you, don't blow up your spot, bro. Don't flip out. Don't freak out. Don't say you're leaving and quit and fuck all this stuff. Reach out to Tony Khan. Try to talk to him. Ask him what your plans are maybe for you in the future. Or if, you know, you're losing the belt and all these other things, can you do him? Can you do me as some kind of solid in the future coming up or something to give me something? I'll 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 look I'll try to make you know Claudio look like a million bucks, but can you please do something to help me? Go to his fucking door and politic that, and then have me your agent call Tony Khan. Tony man, this guy's stock is on the rise. He's the Ring of Honor champion. He can do a lot of things. You know what I mean? Don't sleep on this guy. What are your plans here? You better make it a squash match, or I don't know if he's going to do it. By the way, they did kind of do that because the match was long. It was long. It was a 14- or 15-minute match for the Ring of Honor world title. It wasn't that short. It was a 14- or 15-minute match. Go in the back, shake Tony Khan's hand and say, Tony, thank you for the opportunity, man, and for, for saving Ring of Honor. We could have been dead, and I could have been working at Impact Wrestling only, but instead I'm on this stage. Man, what you've done is amazing. I hope you got something else for me coming up soon, man, because I would die to work for you, and I'd love a chance. Tap him on the shoulder and tell him, man, my family's wondering what I'm doing next, and so am I. Thank you, Tony. Slap him on the shoulder and walk in the back and see what comes next. Wait to find out the offer and what's really coming next. Who gives a shit about the fact that he didn't communicate with you that well? He's not communicating that well with anybody. He's busy as shit. But you blew up your spot. You fucking flipped out too quickly. And you gave your you fucking left your chips on the table for no reason. That's what you did, John Gresham. That's what you did. Shit bum. Midget Man Literary said tonight on his podcast, there has been booked horribly this week, and he said Tony Khan needs to stop being a mark tonight, so. Damn, really, Alex Oli? You should you should be beaten for even knowing he said anything. You should be beating for beaten for listening to that. But anyway, Alex Oli, thank you uh, for the five dollars and becoming a five dollar shit bum. Uh let's add two minutes onto the clock. Maybe I'll give you three minutes. What is that? Uh, 13, 14, 15. We'll go, we'll go 16 minutes on the clock. Wait, I can't, I can't restart this? Oh, my God. This new clock sucks. This new clock sucks. 16 minutes on the clock. Let's go. Thank you for adding time to the show, my friend. Vince McMahon is gone. But it's not the greatest week in WWE history. Simply... Not the greatest week in WWE history. Absolute bullshit. Anybody that says that is full of fucking shit. This is not the greatest week in WWE history. Ah. God, it's enraging. Motherfucker. I thought he was a cool dude. Secrets about why Bruce Bridge really, really left YouTube, even though these motherfuckers really don't know us, because shit that's in the inner circle. You know, uh, Joe Cronin, oh, I got some plans for your ass, my brother. Because, see, little do y'all know, Joe Cronin used to be a super fan of what we do. No, I wasn't. I was never a super fan of what you did or do. My friend Jesse spoke to you constantly and you thought you were talking to me. And at some point, Jesse admitted this to me, that he kind of made it seem like he was me or something. I was never a super fan. I don't think I ever watched one complete show. <laughs> but listen, you fantasize all day long, brother. He used to hit up my fucking inbox all the fucking time, at least. That was Jesse, not me. Two or three times a week. 
giving us props, and I would always take the time to respond, and, and I, I thought he was a cool motherfucker. It was, it was Jesse, not me. I thought he was a cool dude. And then he disappeared. Okay. You know, he would, oh, well, first he would always beg me to come on his show uh, back then. Was, that was, that never happened. About a year and a half, two years. That never happened. You could try to produce those emails. They don't exist. So he always begged me to come on his show. Nope. Beg me to come on his show. And I'm like, nope. Like, no, I only make videos with the boys. I, 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 that's what I, never was disrespectful with it. Never, you know, ignored him or. No. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Hey, wait a minute. Now you're not on you. You haven't been on YouTube in like six years, huh? That's weird. I'm a super fan, a super Dan, a super man. I'm Sean's View Entertainment. You want to see my dick? You want to see my prick? You want to see my dick? Here it is. Look at this. Look at my piss. Look at piss. This. Look at this. Hiss. Anyway, uh, 13 minutes left. It's beat the clock Sunday night. Plenty of stuff to go down here, man. John Gresham, it's on the table. What do you think about John Gresham? I would love to hear what you guys think about John Gresham. Please let me know. Oh, let me put the poll in the chat. Let me let me see what you guys... Maybe I'm the one wrong. Maybe I'm wrong here. Let's find out. Mm. I want to find out if this was the best week in WWE history. Please let me know. You fucking mark. Because we're drink. I don't know. That's what a lot of people, a lot of people are saying this. Not just Midget Man. A lot of people are saying this on Twitter. This is the best week in WWE history. Vince McMahon is like a scumbag. Just like Hulk Hogan was is a terrible scumbag who never did anything, and he's whatever. What is there is tremendous, absolutely tremendous. And I said this with multiple different aspects. One of them: How many writers does WWE employ? Got to be about eighty writers, right? How many fucking writers they got? They got enough to fucking claim that they have a small army. What writers? How many fucking writers they got? Is there? Company because now we could see potential growth. Actually, is and this and that. Vince McMahon hated professional wrestling. I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. This is the greatest day in the history of the company. There is no way. There just is no way this is the greatest day in the history of the company. I am sorry, bro. This is simply. Not the greatest day in the history of the fucking company. You are a fucking mongoloid midget if you think this. You are paid by AEW, Tony Khan, and you're just making shit up. No way. No chance in hell. And it's all over Twitter from so many different people. It's the great, oh my God, it's, uh, Vince McMahon talked bad about women. About it. Vince McMahon's achievements. We need to thank you, Vince. Fuck Vince McMahon. And fuck him, Kevin Dunn. This Wait. isn't the first time that. Wait. You want Kevin Dunn to fuck Vince? What the hell is he. Wait, you want Kevin Dunn to have sex with Vince McMahon? What? And fuck him, Kevin Dunn? Fuck him? him. Kevin Dunn. What? achievements we need to thank you vince fuck vince mcmahon no thanks and fuck him kevin dunn this isn't the first time that dunn has spoken disparagingly about the looks of a female it's not the first time that kevin dunn spoke disparagingly about the looks of a female i've heard i've heard someone speak disparagingly about the looks of a female she does nothing she's just I guarantee you she's one of those women that just lays there and just takes it. Nothing. She does nothing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in bed with Alexa Bliss, man, and she and she performs the same way she does in the ring? Awful. <laughs> man, you're full of, full of the contradictions over there, aren't you? Full of the contradictions, isn't JD full of them? So many people on Twitter 
you know, a lot of us share the same. A lot of you guys like this, like like us the same. So, but I, which is why this probably popped up on my Twitter account so many times today. But it's just ridiculous. I am happy Vince is, you know, something's changing hopefully in WWE and hopefully things are going to get better, no doubt about it. Everyone's excited about that. But this simply was not the greatest week in WWE history. No chance in hell. And it's so no chance in hell that I pulled out the white claws for this show tonight. That's how fucking co committed to this I am. I believe this was definitely not the greatest week in WWE history. Wrong. No. Never happened. Just like when JD said I don't make my car payments. By the way, JD, I own my car now, by the way, brother. Just wanted to let you know, since remember when you tweeted out that I don't make my car payments for whatever reason. Well, I now own my car, and this was not the greatest week in WWE. Shit bum. Add a few more minutes. I'm loving this rant. Let's go, Asher. How you doing, dude? If we make it, yes, we may be going. Uh, we may be going even longer tonight, Asher. Uh, thank you for the five dollars, man. Five dollars added to the show. We'll make it a ten minute show now. Let's clear it. Add ten minutes to the clock. Set it up. Start it. Let's go. Ten minutes back on the board. Courtesy of Asher. Five dollars equals two minutes, and I may change that around later. There is a special amount tonight that I've listed, and it's. I can't tell you what it is, but it's uh, going to add an extra hour to the show on top of everything else. We're having a good time. King Elvis in the chat says, if Theory wins the titles, I'm done. Well, you know, and I've liked Theory. I think he's been pretty good, you know? Um, James Gentry says, it's been a great week. We're celebrating the end of the terror. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to celebrate the end of, uh, you know, the last, the terror that has been Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard. But you know what? People today said this is the greatest week in WWE history, but then they complained that nothing's really changing because Bruce Prichard is still in charge. So how can it be the greatest week in WWE history if you're upset that Bruce Prichard is still in charge? So it's not the greatest week in WWE history. It's just full of contradictions. Contradiction after contradiction after contradiction is what I hear today. That's what I hear. That's what I'm hearing. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil Let's worshipers. Let's hear it, Picharo. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out what of you. Got a problem with Dave? What, you got a problem with Dave Rose? I am sorry, Joe, but I need to be in JD's side on this. No, of course. Even though he is a douche, I get what you're saying, but you really think Bruce Pritchard is going to be in charge for that long? He will be gone soon because Vince is gone. Yes. Kevin Dunn will be gone too. Then what do we we both so what 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 are you saying? Because what you just said I agree with. But the point is it's not the greatest week in WWE history. This is not the greatest week in WWE history. That's the problem. What you just said, that's the problem. I agree. I don't think Bruce Pritchard's gonna be there for too long. But then again, Vince McMahon is the majority shareholder. I believe what I've said for a year. That Nick Khan is in there to sabotage Vince to take over the company. I've always thought Nick Khan is going to sabotage Vince and take over the company. I've hinted at this multiple times. I'm not 100% on it, but I've hinted at it multiple times. Right? And I don't think Bruce Pritchard will be there much longer. And I told you that John Laurinaitis was going to be fired, and he's fired. So, no, we're dead on. We agree on this stuff. But what I don't, but what you're saying you don't agree with me, but we do agree. What? But you're so you're saying this was the greatest week in WWE history because it's not. It's not the greatest week in WWE history. I don't give a crap what the man who drives an automatic car says, an automatic Mustang. I don't care what you say. It's not the greatest week in WWE history. And it's not just a fancy title. He believes that. He says he believes that. And so don't so many people on Twitter and multiple other people that have made videos on this. And I've been watching it all week long, and it's sickening. It's disgusting. It's not true. You raised a piece of shit. If this was the greatest week in WWE history, then Luis Alejandro slays Snatch. Exactly. If this was the greatest week in WWE history, then Luis Antonio Alejandro is going to fall down 
in his apartment with the rest of the goddamn uh, termites that are eating that building alive over in California. All right? Absolutely no way. No chance in hell is this the best week ever. You fucking mark! It's not the greatest week in WWE history. It's the it, it's one of the most it's the it, it may be one of the, it may be the biggest news story in WWE history. Maybe. Might be the biggest news story. Or it might be one of the the biggest momentum changes in history. I would say that you know Vince McMahon turning the company attitude saying that like we're no longer going to insult your intelligence, you know, that sort of thing, and them taking the water coolers because they were out of money. That was one of the biggest turning points in WWE history. This is one of the biggest, this is one of the biggest turning points in WWE history. One of the biggest turning points in WWE history was when Vince McMahon bought the company from his father. The next biggest turning point in WWE history was, you know, when Vince McMahon ate up all the territories. And then the next turning point in WWE history was probably when Vince acquired Hulk Hogan and had that whole thing start, and the Rock and Wrestling, and WrestleMania probably. And then the next biggest moment in WWE history was when Vince turned it Attitude Era. And he said, you know, we're not going to insult your intelligence. We're going to be, we're going to, it's passe. It's whatever the hell Vince did in that weird promo. That's a big turning point in WWE history. And um, this, this is one of the biggest moments, turning points in WWE history, but it's not the greatest week in WWE history. I don't know how I don't know why people find that so hard to figure out and hard to believe. I think almost everybody would agree with this. I would think almost everybody watching this right now agrees with me. They, we're we're all happy that Vince is finally getting the fuck out of here. He's ridiculous. You know, and Bruce Pritchard needs to go too, and everybody in that regime needs to go, and we need to fix this. I think we all agree with that, but I, I just can't believe this is the greatest week in WWE history, and again, maybe if you're 10 years old, maybe if you've only been watching WWE since 2012 or 10 or something, maybe to you, this is the greatest week in history, but there is no chance that it's really the greatest week in history, you know? Let's go ahead and add a few more minutes here. We'll add it back to 10, 10 minutes. Um, so far, what, was this the best week in WWE history? 76% of you guys say no. 24% of you say yes. And I'm betting that 24% has to be younger people. I can't believe that anybody would think this is really the greatest week in history. It really wasn't that great of a week. It's one of the biggest turning points in history, though. That's true. We'll see what changes in WWE. I'm not mis, you know, and I'm not, I'm not misunderstanding it. He, the, it came from the guy's mouth. You know what I mean? I've got, pe I've got what people said on Twitter. I know what they said about it. They, they said it on Twitter. I know what they meant when they said it. This type of shit done. This isn't the first time that done is. Well, watch the show right there. The hopeful growth that is there is tremendous. To Vince McMahon and how influential he is and this and that. Vince McMahon hated professional wrestling. Did he? I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. He produced uh, all the great wrestling that you like or that you grew up loving. That's a weird thing to say. That's a weird thing to say that you don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. I do. It's a weird thing to say, though. It's a disingenuous thing to say. Unless you're like 15. Don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. This is the greatest day in the history of the company. This is the greatest day in the history of the company. What the fuck am I misunderstanding? Shit bomb. Am I shadow banned again from Ratch Chat? Not again. Black pumpkin head. I don't think so. I thought I saw you in there earlier. If you are, give me a link to your channel, man, and I'll add you and fix you. I'm sorry, black pumpkin head. I hope you're okay, man. My bad. If that happened. Could be Google that's doing it. Uh, Vince doesn't care about any of us. Probably right. I think Vince McMahon cares about money. I don't. Vince doesn't even care about his own wife, really, when you think about it. So. You raised a piece of shit. Can we get John China Volume 2, Turkey? 
<laughs> Dylan Hins. What up, Dylan? How you doing, bro? Five bucks. That's going to add. Uh, let's just reset the clock. Start the clock back at 10 minutes. I'll give you three more minutes, man, because you're the man. Dylan, thank you, Dylan. So the show continues. We get, we still have other topics to talk about. Uh, we got John Grisham. Oh, my God! We plan the spot. Oh, my God! The ghost. The ghost. to jam it in. The ghost from the coast. Oh, it's in your bunghole. We plan the spot all day. It's in your bunghole. I want it jammed in my bunghole. Oh, it's in your bunghole. Audio jungle. Grisham is a fucking mark for himself. I blame his cow wife for making him think he's Daniel Bryan and JD thinks he's such a knowledgeable fake coward that shakes when wrestler call him out. Oh. I'd respect him if he stood by what he says and not be a pussy. Wow. The ghost from the co -co 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 coconut coast. Uh, dropping $100, man. Holy crap. Wow. You just added a shitload of time to this show tonight. We plan the spot all day. I want you to jam it in. I'm in a weird mood. Uh, the ghost from the coast. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, you know, John Gresham is full of himself or something. I don't know. And I get it. He's probably pissed. The communication, blah, blah. But again, just wait it out, dude, and see what happens. Now you're in friggin' impact. Now you're in freaking impact. Dude. The ghost from the coast. Thank you, man. What the hell, bro? He just added a huge amount of time to the clock with a bomb. Let's go in. Uh, that's 40 minutes, man. 40 minutes on the board. That's 47. Let's clear this clock. 40, we'll put 48, 48 minutes on the board added to the show. That means that we're going to go over to Discord and talk to some of you guys. Whoever's on the call, we don't know who's going to be here. There's a bunch of people that might be uh, wanting to come on the show tonight, and we will go over to Discord and entertain those people uh, and what they want to say because uh, we've added 47 minutes to this show now. So absolutely insane, man. I hope you guys click that like button and stick the thumb up my ass. John Gresham, man, I just don't get it. I get that he's upset. I get that he might be pissed. Like, dude, you know, I got to come back all of a sudden. First match of the night. Drop the belt in 15 minutes. Whatever. You know, I get it. He's a midget person. You know, little tiny midget people like John Gresham. You know, they get upset, you know, easily. They get offended easily. Like JD. JD got so offended at you guys making fun of him that me repeating the things you said made him send a lawyer after me to cease and desist me, if you guys remember. He literally cease and desisted me uh, over your jokes about him. So I understand all too well about how little tiny midget people get upset. So I can understand why Josh Gresham or John Gresham is upset and why he's furious. He had a belt that made him feel four inches taller, but now he doesn't have the belt anymore. Now all he has, according to you guys, is a cow wife or something. I don't know. I don't know who John Gresham's girlfriend or wife is, so I'm not going to say that type of stuff about people. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, I don't know who his girl is. Maybe she's a sweetheart. You know, Maybe she's hot. I don't know, but you guys are saying she's a cow. I don't know. What, I don't even know who she is, so I'm not sure. But um, according to you guys, she is some kind of a battle cow of, of some sorts. But, you know, I don't know. You fucking mark! Ric Flair's last match is coming up pretty soon. That's going to be fun. There's 9,000 people that are going to stand up and say, fuck Ric Flair. He did that for real. Of course he did. Everybody, you don't remember that? That was a big thing on YouTube. I mean, I've got the letter. I've got the email. He sent it to JB, my co-host. He, he, he threatened his former lover, like with one. It's crazy, bro. That that guy sends out legal documents at will, bro. He's a sick person. Um, you know. But uh, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, we're on Discord. I'm gonna open up the phone lines as well. My mother just said something to me, so I'm gonna say I love her. 
What a sweetheart my mother is. She loves me even though I'm five foot ten. John Gresham's mother didn't, you know, we don't know what kind of love went on there, you know, obviously. Hey, listen, Ghost from the Coast, thank you so much, man, for dropping a hundred dollars. That's insane. Guys, man, give it up for Ghost from the Coast. Let's put him on the board down here because that's massive, bro. Ghost from the Coast. Keeping this show alive and going, man. I thought we might have an early night tonight, but I guess not. Uh, if you guys missed my show the other night, I called a sex line as Mick Foley, and I complained that I was upset about my daughter's only my daughter my daughter having an OnlyFans. So if you guys missed that from a couple of days ago, don't forget to listen to Mrs. Foley's baby boy complain about his baby girl's baby maker on a sex line call. It was really starting to get under my skin because all the all the wrestling nerds bring me pictures to sign of my own daughter. And she's named after Christmas. All right, relax, Mick. All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be okay, Mick. Okay, well you just calm down. If you'd been a better dad, you know this wouldn't happen. But okay. Dunkachino? Don't mind if I do. Oh shit! What's my name? Adtr. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm a G G R. Is here. Suck your awesome rant. As always, this is not the greatest week in WWE history. Whoever believes that they are on crack. They are on crack. Thank you, ADTR. Absolutely, they're sick. They're sick and disgusting people, and they're on crack. They're sick and disgusting, disgusting midgets. ADTR. ADTR is an OG of the Joe Cronin show. Man, I love you, ADTR. If I knew where you were, I'd come down there. We'd make a video that would make even the nastiest hardcore porn stars throw up. ADTR, thank you for the $10, man. Speaking of disgusting, let's drink some claw, brother. The claw is ready to go, man. The claws replace the crayon. Just so you, just in case you didn't realize it, the claws replace the the crayon, brother. Hit the like button. We have 151 likes. Why? We should have 200 likes. If we don't have 200 likes by the end of this show, baby sheep are gonna be killed in Pakistan. Okay, so let's figure this out. I might, you know what I mean. Let's not mess around here. Shit bomb. Do people forget he's still the majority share owner? He's not going anywhere. Plus, he's the man that brought wrestling to the mainstream. Exactly. Marks. Bunch of marks. Terminator Joe, thank you for becoming a $5 shit bum, uh, Terminator Joe. Thank you for donating to the show, man. Thank you very much, bro. You fucking mark! All right, so we're going to set the clock back to about 50 minutes between that and the other donation. I, I, I forgot about the other one, so 50 minutes on the board. Start her up. This show's going to go, baby. We're going to go over to Discord in a second. I might take calls as well. Uh, you know what? I'll take calls. 339-226-6610, and then we'll move over to Discord in a few minutes. 339-226-6610. Call into the show. And let's do this. Don't mess around. Let's do it. Give a call to the show. We'll put you on the air. Then we'll go over to Discord in a few minutes. And we'll do it right over there. We'll get on the Discord. We'll bring on all the other opinions about what's going on. What's going on? We got a lot of different people calling, it looks like already. Uh, we will go to the Discord in a few minutes. <laughs> okay, Stu me, you do that, brother. Uh. Ugh. I could die on the air tonight, the way my stomach feels. Feels like I got something wrong with me. You know, it feels like uh, maybe maybe the goddamn hobgoblins are coming down. Uh, Infowars.com. Uh, hello, uh, 646. Hey, what's going on, Joe, man? How you been? Good, man. How you been doing? Yeah, I've been good, man. Just, you know, listening to the show, you know, having a good time, having me a good old drink. Let's go. This uh, Alvin, man. I'm ready to go. But, I'm know, drinking. I'm yes, go ahead. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Everybody in the IWC, everybody saying that Vince McMahon leaving is the greatest moment in wrestling history is is a huge reach. Like Vince, Mc, I'm telling you guys right now, like Vince McMahon leaving isn't going to be a huge game changer. Isn't going to move the needle for wrestling for WWE. It's going to be the same old garbage we've been getting for like 10 plus years. Nothing's going to change. And I'm going to tell you why. Vince McMahon, he, even though he retired, 
he's pulling the strings. So Vince, so Stephanie McMahon, Triple H, they're just they're just puppets. They're just yes men that just follow whatever Vince McMahon wants. Who's to say that the allegations don't don't calm down? Things go back to normal, then Vince comes right back, and then we get the same product we've been having for over a decade now. Yeah, and I think people are going to be surprised. See, here's the thing. Vince is gone, basically, and even when he wasn't, we're never going to get the Vince of old. We're never going to get the Vince and WWE of old. Even if oh, Tri- no. you know, even if Triple H comes in and does awesome, right, and he brings back like the NXT type of era, we love that. You love that. I do. But we know that as a ceiling. It, it has a ceiling of at least maybe a million people, but... It's not going to, you know, whether Vince is there or not there, we're still never going to get what we had of Vince in the late 90s, you know, no matter what happens. Never again. Yeah, so like, I mean, it's, it's not either like, way. It's not like, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just said either way, it's not happening. We're never, ever, ever going to get that again. I mean, Vince McMahon, he's, he's older, he's more senile. Um, they can't go back to the attitude already. They can't go back to the ruthless aggression already. They can't go back to the things that they used to do with how things have changed, how the cancer culture is, how how things have evolved. They can't ever go back to how they were. But WWE wrestling could be be better than it is. Like wrestling is on life support right now, man. It really is. Yeah, no, the only, I, I, the best, all wrestling the best all, people, all wrestling is on life support. You're right. It's it's hanging by a thread, all of it. The only thing, what, what were you gonna say? The the best the best thing, literally the best um heel in in professional wrestling right now is MJF. Guys like MJF, he he knows he knows wrestling. He knows the fundamentals. He understands wrestling. He understands that no matter what, right? You stay in character. These guys nowadays they break character. Like I remember Reigns, Reigns Roman Reigns, fantastic, remarkable heel, but. He broke character at a house show and shit like that. You would not see that from from MJF. He stays in character regardless. That I, element is missing in wrestling. Captivating storylines, larger than life stars. That's missing in wrestling, man. Wrestling is just not gonna. It's just it's just not how it used to be. They're all too busy trying to have a video game tournament or something on their Twitch and shit. Like, but MJF is, dude. I drool over the idea that that guy's committed to being a prick. You know. Yeah, man. Like I just feel that I like feel like that's truly how he is and that's that that part is missing from professional wrestling nowadays. It's, Listen, I one hundred percent agree with you, dude. You it's a great call. I agree with you. Thank you for calling, man. Please call again. I I really enjoyed you. Um yeah. let's go to another call because there's so many. Eight three nine, oh I lost you, two oh one, I lost you. Eight three nine, I lost you. Uh if you're waiting on the Discord, just hang in, we'll get you on we'll get on Discord in a few minutes. Um, call back. I will get you on the air, man. We had a lot of call, a lot of missed calls there during that. Uh, let me just mark that guy down because he had a good, uh, he had a good call. Uh, let me. I think he was a good call. Uh, let's see. Let me see. There we go. Um, let's go to call back. I'm oh. Holy crap, man! You got people don't know. Got to turn that radio, turn that, I'm not on the radio, turn that computer down, turn the feedback down, I don't know. 586, what's going on, man? Hey, hey man, hey, man, what's up? What's man, going on, man? JD, uh, it's just a lot that he cracks an, an orgasm every time he talks about this man or every time he talks about Bruce Pritchard or whatever. Yeah, I mean, he's got he's got like a he's got something down in his pants. You think for like you think he's horny for Bruce Pritchard and Vince? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, no, no. But he's horny for Tony Khan, dog, because he'd be on Tony Khan. Junkyard. You think that JD's paid by Tony Khan? Maybe under the table, probably. Maybe under the table. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, I mean. Because yeah, I mean, because why is he so hard for? I get it, because he's all in on him, you know. But nobody else, I, you know. I, you're right. You might be right. You might be right. I don't know if that's true, but if but a lot of people say that, I will say that. Yes, I mean, because a couple of days ago, I unfollowed him mm. on Twitter a couple of days ago. I mean, because because he, I mean, he let it piss me off. It's, it's something like that Vince Man made right. 
I said two guys that would have made wrestling. It was Vincent Matt and Oak Hogan. And I said, why would you trash the guy that made wrestling that made that, that, that right now making you money? They they took wrestling to a different level, to a, ne- a new level, and that's the thing. Or the you know, in the wrestling that we all love is here today because of these guys. To, so to say this is the greatest week in wrestling history to me is so ridiculous. But uh, you should follow me on Twitter at JCS Commentary, and I hope you're subbed, man. And great call, love you. And if you join the Patreon, thank you for that too, man. I really appreciate that. Let's go to uh, let's go to another call. Um, there's so many right now, but let's go to another one. Six oh one, how you doing? Hey, yo, it's from NY. Oh my God! I can't. I haven't talked to you in years since we used to do shows together. How you doing, man? Bro, I can't believe it. It's the best week in WWE history, bro. Oh my God! Is it really? It really is the best week. I mean, hey, how's your automatic Mustang doing? The other day when I was driving down to Jacksonville to collect my AEW check, bro. Oh my God! So you are. Wait a minute. So you are paid by Tony Khan. This is crazy. I'm paid one million dollars a year by Tony Khan. Oh my God! Hey, how many new cats are you gonna buy with that money? Seventy-four. <laughs> oh my God! Hey, listen. I'm gonna give you a simple question. I just want to know this. You have the choice of um, going into a like a male a male cl- you know a woman's nightclub you know like a stripper club a stripper club or uh, or uh, you could choose dick which one would you choose? I'm gonna choose big fat throbbing dick. Oh my right! Oh my God! This is why I stopped doing a podcast with you. You're sick. Shut up. No. All right, that's you. Get out of here. I'm hanging up on you. As I'm blocking you. Don't ever fucking call me again. Don't ever call me again. You mark. You mark. You're a sick person for calling me. Why would you call me? You cease and desisted me. You try to take away my livelihood. I have three little kids to take care of, and you lied to your audience and said I don't pay my car payments. And now you're attacking me, and now you come on here and you have the gall to say that you love dick on my show? Fuck off. Dick about Vince McMahon. This guy, I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. And that's, and you're sick. This is the greatest day in the history of the company. Because No, it's not. It is not the greatest day in the history of the company. No. You fucking mark. 860, you're on the phone. What's going on, my man? Dimitri, what's up? Hey, man. Hey, man. It's Jim S. How you doing, buddy? Hey, bro. I'm doing good. Man, you sound like uh, you're down. What's going on? No, I'm just a little tired. Um, this is not the greatest week ever, number one. Okay, good. I agree. I'm glad we agree there. Okay, the greatest week ever was when Vince uh, took it over from his dad. You said that. And when he wiped out the territories, that was not so good. When he start when he started the Attitude Era out of desperation because WCW was kicking his behind, that was not so good. But he had to do it. When he put WCW out of business, it was it, you know they're reaching milestones. Instead of saying this is the greatest week ever, maybe they should slow down and say, well, this is this is one of the greatest milestones in the history of WWE. I agree. Also, I, I agree. like the. No, I, I, I 100% also, agree with you. Just, just just change it to that. If you say this is one of the most monumental times in WWE history, that's true. I agree with that for sure. Yeah, yeah greatest week. These these IWC R slickers, okay, mm. are still gonna wake up. Okay, are still gonna wake up in their with their same little miserable lives, wanting to be accepted, while Vince McMahon sits in Florida on a pile of money. Okay, what and is what, what is he gonna do? The go- what the hell is he gonna do? You think he's gonna sit out there on a beach, or you think he's gonna get right to work on some kind of venture? Like, cause he, uh, man, this guy can't I, not work, right? No, the guy, the guy lives for his work, and what I'm afraid is gonna happen to him is what's gonna happen to most guys who dedicated their lives to their job. We're gonna be. Hopefully, I really hope he makes it a year. Because if he can make it a year with do nothing, he'll be fine. I just, you know, some guys just, they did dedicate their whole lives to working. And then when they don't have it, in six months, they're gone. 
Okay. Yeah. So everybody mm-hmm. needs everybody needs to get their nose out of AEW's ass. Okay, because AEW had a good shot, like TNA had a good shot to be different, but they went down the same rabbit hole that they all go down to. And I wouldn't be surprised that now that Vince is gone, I wouldn't be surprised that some of these AEW pickups go, you know what, this place is a joke, give me my release, I've tried to do everything I could here, but it's not working, I'll go back to NA. Like John, yeah. like John Grisham, you know, John Grisham is like, fuck AEW, fuck this whole thing. And, you know, he's out of there. I mean, he's a midget too, but he's out of there. Well, I mean, he went about it the wrong way, but the thing is, you know, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the AEW. The regular AEW from, talent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine Undisputed Era coming back to NXT 2.0 and just tearing the place apart? Come on out, you okay. rapist! The internet yeah. wrestling community needs to get its head out of its own ass, okay? Oh. And the business needs to grow. Otherwise, in another 10 years, no one will give a rat's ass about anything. Well, and there's more important things in life than wrestling. Uh-huh. And Like killing people. Just getting, well, just get, getting through life. Well, let me... Let you me, do... You can, do well, can yeah, I? Can ahead, you buddy. say? Um, I I love what you said. I agree with everything you said. I'm gonna let you go in a second, but, and I appreciate you. You've always been awesome to me. But can you just say one thing before you go? Can you say, uh, "I kill people." I thrill people. Okay. Well, close enough. All right. Hey, Ric Flair. Let it. What's going on, Ric Flair? There's nine thousand people that are gonna stand up and say, "Fuck Ric Flair." Is- well. Uh, well, I don't know if they're going to say that, Ric Flair. There's 9,000 people that are going to stand up and say, Fuck Ric Flair. Is- We're going to put a new poll up. Uh, let's go back to the donations and see what you guys are saying. You raised a piece of shit. I think her misreading it. It has the potential to be something we look back on and say, Wow, Vince leaving was the best day because WWE became good again. Vince leaving isn't the best, but what Vince leaving does for WWE will be the best. JD still a dwarf. You know, he is a dwarf, but you know what? I don't think I'm misreading at all. I'm not misreading it because not only have so many people tweeted me today that, dude, you don't understand how this is the greatest time in wrestling history. Some people said wrestling history. This right now is leading to the greatest time in wrestling history. No chance in hell that's true. If you say that, you are a fake person. You know what I mean? But what I agree with is this is the greatest change to happen in wrestling, potentially the greatest change to happen in wrestling in like 15 years or 10 years, you know? Uh, Or this could be the biggest change, that sort of thing. You can say that. But this is not the greatest week in wrestling history. The week Stephanie McMahon was abducted by The Undertaker was a better week. The week Chris Benoit took himself out of this universe was a better week. There are so many weeks that are better. There are weeks in 1990, 1993, etc., etc., etc. This is not the greatest week. So I'm not misinterpreting this. People said this on Twitter today. They said this yesterday, and they said this the day before, and now people like this have said it. Professional wrestling. I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. This is the greatest day in the history of... Of the company because now no it's not do you know what do you know what really could be the one of the greatest days in the history of the company when vince mcmahon created wrestlemania one of the greatest days when he purchased the company one of the greatest days could have been when he changed to the attitude era because the company was about to go out of business so there would be no company right now if he didn't do that this is not the greatest day in the history of the company. It can't be. It just can't be. I love it. Thank God things are changing. They need to get Bruce Pritchard the hell out of there. Get Bruce Pritchard the fuck out of this company. Bruce Pritchard's got to go. Or he's going to be... I actually wouldn't fire Bruce Pritchard. I got to be honest. If I worked for WWE, I would have Bruce Pritchard be a guy who works with the creative team. But I wouldn't have him gatekeeping the creative. I would have him have his own little writing team and bring me stuff. 
You're in charge of a team. You're in charge of a team. You're in charge of a team. And we would have competition, and every single month we would put up on the board, Bruce's team produced such and such segments with such and such ratings. You know, and we would have stats on everybody and how they're fucking... Um, how their stories are going. Bruce came up. Bruce's team came up with an idea. We're on week number eight of it, and it's getting great ratings. People love it on social media. It was the most tweeted thing in the company. Johnny's team over here, you are shit. You're in last place. Paul, Paul Heyman's team, you're in second place. You guys have five running things for ten weeks. This thing's going on. The stats are on this or whatever, social media. That's what you do. You give a whole bunch of people writing teams, writing groups, and once the scripts and things get approved, you put them into play, and you follow the stats, you follow the trends, you follow the numbers, and you keep in touch, and you know what they're producing. And if Johnny's team is in last place for one year, you bring in another team. And if that team does better than Johnny's team, guess what? Johnny's team is the fuck out of a job. And that's how you make... A company work or a writing team work. You don't have 30 people sitting around a desk coming up with ideas. Then they bring it to Vince and Vince shoots down 90% of it and then changes 50% of most of the things that get approved. Or everything just gets approved through Bruce Pritchard, who has the bathroom potty poopy humor of a fucking eight-year-old in 1990. Okay? that's So we're all in agreement on this. Vince, gone. Bruce Pritchard, Needs to run back down to the base of a writing team or just retire. Fine, whatever. Kevin Dunn was a legend in the 90s. The guy did amazing filming of WWE. I am never going to take away what that buck tooth fucking weird mongoloid did. He did amazing things in the 90s, right? Visually for the WWE. But then once he got into his head, he got into his head, I'm Mr. A movie producer guy. And then he started getting lazy, and there's jump cuts everywhere every second. There's a cut and a cut and a cut and a cut. The ring, he changed the sound of the ring because he didn't like the thud noises under the ring. He literally watered down the product with his weird overproducing bullshit. So Kevin Dunn, I, you're a legend. Uh, you should be in the Hall of Fame, but time to go. Bruce Pritchard, time to move down somewhere else. John Laurinaitis, it is. it was time to go. And I knew he was going, and so didn't you, and I'm glad he's gone. Triple H is going to do a better job. This is a great week for the WWE. This is a, this, it might be, and it might be great news. It should be. This is what you've all and we've all wanted. However, there is the possibility that they mishandle it still, right? So we'll see what happens. But that being said, this was not the greatest week in WWE history. It was not the greatest week ever. No. Go poop on yourself for saying that. Go poop, poopy pee pee on yourself. Um, hit the like button, by the way, if you can, guys. And the donation link is up top, or you can super chat. Uh, go to the phone calls. Two one zeros on the phone. Hello. Hey, oh, hey, what's up, Joe? Uh, hey, what's, what's going up? on? What's up, man? I just got to say that, like, dude, JD is fucking dumb. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's a fucking dumbass. Damn. It just shows, like, bro, like, I bet you five bucks that he has a cat named Bruce. I mean, you're serious. It really would not surprise me at this point. But. <laughs> you think that he names but, his pets after the people that make him money? Yes, absolutely. There you go. I really think that. Wow. Like, but. But like, like yeah, like like listen. Everybody can hate on Vincent, but I actually will always like, like say like, hey, Vince saved this business by going mainstream and you know everything else. And I think what needs to happen is that I would keep Bruce, but. I don't know who else to have. Like that's like the, the biggest thing for, for me is like, because we have to go back to creating, like we could go back to like the attitude era, but it's like, I don't know. Like 
I think right now it's just a big question mark there. It really is. We don't know what the hell they're going to do, if it's going to be great, bad, good, you know, like mediocre. You know, we don't know what they're going to do. But I got to believe it's going to be better than what we've been seeing because I've been given Raw for the past couple of years. You know, 1 out of 10, 2 out of 10, 3 out of 10, 4 out of 10. There have been very few 5s and 6s that I've given Raw, if any. Um, So it's got to be better than what we got, man. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. It's got to be better. Um, we got We do have uh, 10 minutes we got to add to the clock. I'm just going to I'm writing down the notes here for the Super Chats and donations. You raised a piece of shit. Greatest Royal Rumble was better than this week. WTF JD smoking. Yeah, the Greatest Royal Rumble week was better. Moss Blaze. Moss Blaze. Thank you, Moss Blaze, for the Ocho coming down. Uh, we'll add. Uh, we'll make it twelve. Well, we'll make it thirteen minutes. We'll make it thirteen minutes. We'll add to the clock in a minute uh, for that moss blaze. Good to hear from you, man. Cheers, bro. I got the claw tonight. We got the claw tonight, baby. If you guys got the claw, I want you to urinate in it and drink it. It's great. I mean, don't really do that. It's bad for you, but do it if you're insane like me. Shit bomb. Who cares? Joe, how long does Bucky Bucktooth Kevin Dunn got left in WWE? You know, I think Kevin Dunn's gone within a year. If it's not sooner, I think it's within a year. You know, but he I think he's going to, I don't know, man, that insider trading rumor. There's a big rumor about insider trading that he did that, Kevin Dunn, so that could be a problem for Kevin Dunn, man. That could be a mate. Jason916, what's up, dude? Thanks for coming. $5 shit bum. I'll say within a year he'll be gone, Kevin Dunn. I think Triple H kind of likes Kevin Dunn, though, so I think that's the thing. If there's nothing legal that's going to come, you know what I mean? Because I think do a little that, basketball oh. dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. I'll take a big poopy. Fuck JD, that dude is such a fucking mark for him and a hypocrite with small man syndrome. I hope he has all star athletes for kids and they lose their legs before the draft. Ooh. Yikes. I don't think he'll ever have kids, but uh because you'd have to be committed to a woman for that, but um, I would, I would, I will not wish that on him. I actually do like him, you know. But I'm mad at this take. I'm, I'm going to say that I'm not happy with this take. But I will not wish that upon him at all. Um, if you know, that's crazy. <laughs> but what up, beard gang? Beard, beard gang, 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 gang. Wing. Let's just have wings. Let's just have wings, guys. Let's just have wings. Let's just have wings. Let's just have wings. Thank you, Sith Negan, for that beautiful, beautiful sound clip. Let's just have wings, Sith Negan. Shout out to the Negan $100 patron for 39 months on Patreon, Sith Negan. And we had a new producer earlier, 25 bucks. And if you guys haven't heard it, me and Dave Rose brought back Final Frontier News. And we talked about the moon landing. Is it fake? We talked all about some of that stuff in part one of that. It's up on Patreon an hour and 30 minutes long. You can listen to the audio, download the audio, or just watch the YouTube link. It's on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Go give it a listen. Final Frontier News is back. Dave had some interesting takes. I had some fun. And Ric Flair is going to have his last match. There's 9,000 people that are going to stand up and say, Fuck Ric Flair and shit bum. Oh. Joe, not sure if you have talked about this, but with Stephanie being CEO, what do you think will happen with the Saudi deal? Yeah, you know, um, that's really going to be up to her and Nick Khan and the and the shareholders. And, you know, Vince is a majority shareholder, so he plays in big. And that's why you got to get Bruce Pritchard out of there as far as power, right? You don't want Bruce Pritchard to have too much power because he could be influenced by Vince. Um, but Dick Spit, thank you for the $5 and becoming a $5 ship. Um, that's going to add 18 minutes total to the clock and to this show tonight. And I'll be going over to Discord in just a second. But... Um, you know, yeah, I think they're still going to do it for the time being. They're going to honor because they've been, I think they've been paid on a lot of this stuff. The deal is there. If they were to pull out of the deal or change the deal because of Stephanie McMahon's 
moral feelings or any feelings that Stephanie McMahon had morally about the situation. I mean, the shareholders are not going to be happy about that. That's a lot of money left on the table. That's a lot of money that is is just kind of like, hey, let's just lose this money because I feel bad or weird or whatever. No, they're absolutely, they're going to continue going forward as the world's ambassadors, feeling that they're making change in a, in the Middle East you know, by, by bringing the WWE entertainment to the Saudi Arabia and things like that. So, you know, absolutely not. I don't think you're going to get that. Um, and basically, yeah, so I, I don't think anything really is going to change with Saudi Arabia. I mean, Saudi Arabia would have to start pulling, like, some kind of Russia move where they were invading someone or nuking people or something for the WWE and the shareholders to want to pull out of that. So, you know, I do not think that's going to happen and things are going to change. So, yeah, I don't think that's happening. But I, I get where that's coming from and why you would be into thinking that, but I, I don't think there's going to be a worry there for anybody who loves Saudi Arabia and for the shareholders. I know that none of us are worried, but, you know, the shareholders are a bit worried or whatever. I get it. So we'll see what happens, man. Uh, by the way, one more month and it's 10 years on YouTube live, doing this live, doing live streams on YouTube, 10 years. Nobody else has been doing live WWE Raw reviews every Monday for 10 years. Guys, this is a monumental thing. I've done almost nothing really important in my life besides had some pumps up, pump out some kids. My wife did because I pumped her with my love sauce. Uh, we'll put 20 minutes on the board for that. But, um, you know, this show has really been a staple uh, in my life and everything we've done. Thank you guys for being part of it and for supporting my channel and supporting the things here. Um, if you guys have anything to say, use the Super Chat down below. Um, all my links to everything are down below as well. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. I think it's all down there, all the bullshit. Email me, Joe Cronin Show at Yahoo.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter at JCS Commentary. Let's go back to the donos real quick. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. Go ahead. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Now that piece of crap boss is now gone, that means WWE will hire me back. This means I will be world champion, which I deserve. Also, F. Joe, you are a bully, and I'm oh. coming back to WWE, and you still can't even get hired. You know what, Stop Ryback? trolling in my chat. Shut the hell up, Ryback, you stupid Mark. Yeah, I'm going to eat my own asshole. You know what, Ryback? I'm really sick of you, bro. Are you ever going to leave me alone, Ryback? Is this just going to go on forever and ever until the end of time, Ryback? Dude, I, and listen, I think you had a better chance of Vince hiring you, okay? So you say that all you want. I think you had a better chance, Ryback, of Vince hiring you, okay? Okay? No. Eric Chambers, you clearly are a retard moron in the chat because I said live after Monday Night Raw. Nobody has been going live after Monday Night Raw as long as me. And even though you just mentioned Sean's view 12 years or whatever the hell you just said, I can show you how you're still stupid because even though what you just said was wrong and dumb, because you said that Sean's view has been doing it longer at 12 years. No, he hasn't. No one's been going live after Raw for 10 years in a row since 2012 like me. Nobody's been doing it. Other people have made wrestling videos longer. But also, I'd like to remind you that I was making wrestling videos too. But I launched this particular channel to go live, right? If you want to see my wrestling reviews from 15 years ago, you certainly can check those out. They exist. So, like, this isn't a dick measuring contest, all right, for who did what whenever. I'm just trying to celebrate 10 years. You know what I'm saying? That's all. I'm just trying to celebrate 10 years on YouTube. Do you know what I mean? You get it, right? God damn it. Let's see. 
Um, let me see if I can get your question up. Hold on a second. Try to get your question up. Uh, I don't know if I can find it. I think you asked me about Vince McMahon's lawyer. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that, nor nor have I seen that anywhere. So, you know, I don't think you're going to get that anywhere. You know what I mean? The the lawyer stuff, I don't think you're going to get that. By the way, you know, you mentioned to me that, um, you know, I haven't been doing whatever. I have, uh, once again, even though I've, like I said... Everybody out there, uh I've been doing this live since 2013 uh, or 12, rather. Um, but I can also steer you to the year 2008. You know, I could steer you to the year 2009. You know, so it's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal, bro. You know, I could, I could steer you to the year 2011. You know? Um... I'm Dan Cronin. And this uh, is not, this is when, this is on my other channel. And this is 2011, and it's not live. But yeah, I was doing reviews. Wasn't that good, though. If you ask me now, I have no idea why. If you ask me now, I have no idea why I'm using a microphone that's $20. So if you want to take the time to be look at Mongoloid there, you know, go ahead. Uh, but thank you for that comment. But no, I, I have not I not seen anything about the Vince McMahon lawyers anywhere, you know, as far as this goes. So I, I don't know about that. I haven't heard that. I haven't seen that. So I'm not really going to comment on that because I don't I don't see that anywhere, to be honest. You know what I mean? Thank you. You know what I mean? Let's see. Ryback, what do you have to say about this? Vince McMahon hated professional wrestling. I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. No, oh, you should because you wouldn't be here without him. This is the greatest day in the history of the company. No, it's not. No, it's not. Unless you like the current company that just makes money and doesn't care about wrestling. It's not the greatest day ever. It's not the greatest day. It's not. Greatest day was like 1995, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, you know, 2001, whatever. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't this, man. I'm telling you. This is the most ridiculous thing on Twitter. I've seen people saying it. I heard the sound clip. It's ridiculous. Speaking of sound clips, listen to this one. End the fuck over. Um, um, but no, he still didn't want to do that. Yeah, because <laughs> nothing he was saying was logical. Chad party. Oh, my God. I'm crying Spaz right Phoenix. JD would be Ryback's prison wife. <laughs> oh, my God. Get down. Shut up. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing to me, bro? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut your mouth. What's your name? <laughs> Wait, tell me what's your name. Uh, my name is JD. I'm Shut the fuck up. But you told me. Shut up. Bend over. I want you to bend the fuck over. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, my, my cat's on my lap, though. I don't want to bend over. Oh, my God. Shut up and bend over. Okay. Ugh. Uh, Ugh. Oh. oh my god, my ass, my ass, my ass, what are you doing to my ass? Oh, yeah, no, oh, shell shock, finish it. Oh my god, don't finish it, please don't finish it. I'm gonna finish it. Oh my god, what the hell am I listening to? Finish in it. Jesus. That's right. They're nice tits. They're <laughs> fucking beautiful. All right. My wife is... See, this stuff makes my wife horny, and I don't like it. That's right. They're nice tits. They're Sound fucking flat. beautiful. They're fucking wicked awesome, man. Come on out, you rapist! All right. All right. Let's let's all calm down. Settle down. This is weird. This is getting real weird. Let's Let's calm down, okay? I'll bring I'll bring anybody on. You want to come on Schlong's view? I'll, I'll bring you on. I'll bring anybody on. It's Joe Cronin show. We do what we want when we want. Okay, let me tell you something. Let's go to the calls. Let's go. Let's go to Discord. Yo, it's beat the clock Sunday night. 
Yo. What's up, baby? You want a baby bottle? How you doing? What's up? You want to know something, Joe? You want to know uh, what love is? No, what do you want? You know what? that JD call from earlier? Yes. Who do you think you was? Oh my god, it was you. That was too <laughs> Oh, oh my. I, hey, actually, Joe. I thought we had some other creative people here in the community, but I guess not. <laughs> hey, Joe. Yo, AJ Adams, how you doing, dude? What's up? Hey, uh, I got JD's cousin here. You want to talk to him? Yeah, let's talk to them. Let's hear what they have to say. Hold up, hold up. Okay. Hey, Joe, what's up? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sound just like him. JD's cousin, BJ. You better be my cousin. Please be my cousin. No, I'm going to come and fuck your cat. You hear me? Oh, come on, man. Oh, you got to stop leave doing my cousin it. alone. Jesus, oh. AJ. You hear me? He has a cat named Joe, and he fucks it every night. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So you don't think this? <laughs> wait a minute. You don't. Bitch. You don't think this is the greatest day in WWE history ever? What? Do you- are, are we, we we need to define what this word "greatest" means? Because at this point, I'm like confused beyond belief. How is this the greatest week? It's definitely one it's of the not. most important, but it's not near the greatest. It's, like, not, like, it, it, it's all perceptive too. The word "great," it, it's not. It's not concrete where everybody says it's the greatest. It's only perceptual. Hence, why when somebody makes a claim like that, especially if they've only been, all due respect, but like if you're only been doing wrestling reviews for only so long, and Vince McMahon has been the owner of a, of a multi million dollar company for forty years plus, yeah, like yeah, no, you, you don't have a claim to say this is the greatest week and mind you he's still the majority stockholder yeah he he still could move a lot of pieces vince mcmahon he's he's in a power struggle with fucking tony khan with uh no with uh, nick khan yeah go ahead i'm sorry vince mcmahon owns 80 percent of all stocks in the company that well, wait a minute. I oh, thought. So, I, wait a minute. I thought he owned sixty or fifty or fifty. No, yeah, I'm fifty-three. Pre- yeah, or Maybe. something. Or, at any rate, he owns the majority of the stocks in the company. So right. if you take down ten people, he has like five people's worth of a vote. So yes, any sort of creative change or something has to go by him. Any sort of that has nothing to do with it. Creative has nothing to do with being the the majority stockholder. Do you have influence during um, mm-hmm. meetings? Absolutely, mm-hmm. but that's a stockholder meeting. That's not a meeting of right. uh, creative. Yes, creative. stockholders can only say like, "We wouldn't like that if you did that." They can still do that. Okay, I want to address a few things. I made. Go I ahead, even Dave. Made notes here. Thank uh, you. First Thank and you, foremost, you fucking midget. Um, oh. You would have no job without the WWE or Vince, so shut it. Second, okay, he says this is the best week ever for WWE. Well, let's follow Vince through. McMahon. I don't know who's got we the fucking window open. Yeah, geez, buddy, uh, Man. Okay, think about this. Okay, well, what about next week? This was announced literally as uh, after the, the exchange closed. What kind of result are we going to see Monday when it comes to uh, exactly right. on Monday morning? Yeah, right. Monday morning. And this is what I've been saying to other people because people keep saying, oh, well, he's the majority stockholder. Okay, fine. But have you not noticed this in the past? Because I sure as fuck have. That when situations get tough in a, a certain company, that they're forced to sell so that they don't have that influence because yeah. that that sometimes gives the investors uh, trepidation in investing because they think okay well it's all, we're already seeing problems here we're not seeing a change in 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 uh, the executive and this is going to continue so i got to sell stuff off or it's going to depreciate in price there's going to be a sell off in in stocks and stuff so many many times you do find where they may at, at least initially had majority uh, voting um that they were forced to sell because it was just going to give confidence to the investors so that they don't do a panic uh, sell-off. Yeah, and also, mind you, Dave, just to add on to that, just to add on to that, the the, the fact that Vince owns both A and B stocks, right? The fact that he owns the majority of all these stocks and still has influence, and we haven't even seen like based upon like you know the full power of the new regime yet and it hasn't already been monday yet and everybody's losing their crap about oh this is the greatest well dude first and foremost vince mcmahon who bought the company from his father who before that was his grandfather and he did boxing before wrestling 
and had an influence on the New York market, which then expanded to a global empire. The fact of the matter is that you don't want to have Vince McMahon around in any capacity is the dumbest move. People can say in this in the idea that, oh, Vince gone is going to be great. People can just talk about Vince as much as they want as creative. That has nothing to do with shareholders and making money. Because at right. the end of the day, that's what the business is all about, making money. Yep, and uh, he's going to be there. He offered himself to be there. You know, and we're now we're waiting to see. Really, the other thing we're waiting to see besides the stocks on Monday, Monday and Tuesday, really, Monday and Tuesday are going to be huge to watch. It's going to be very interesting. But the other thing to watch is what's coming out, what's going on that made Vince McMahon step away before SummerSlam, before the Madison Square Garden show. You know, there's a lot of. Sort of like what's coming? Oh, they're gonna go gaga yeah. all across that show. I and, honestly, yeah. I honestly believe that there's more. I mean, obviously, you've got these allegations, but there's more and more that seem to be it. coming out. It doesn't look like this was a one-time thing. It no. looks like this has been a continuous yeah. thing for decades. We know about Pat Patterson, all that stuff. So it looks like, and that's why I've said in the past, it looks like it's in preparation to uh, he separate himself. Just like all these CEOs do, they resign, and then a few months down the road, they're in fucking in front of a, a grand jury or something. Right. Well, so well, right now, Dave, and, and again, I'm sorry for interrupting, but right now we have still not have heard any indictment or court uh, scheduling of any kind. It's still in the allegation phase. But that's and how it always starts. Right. right. And that's how it always starts. But we're still not there yet until we're actually there right now. No, but it, he wouldn't damage the brand. I talked about this. They, he wouldn't damage the brand if if he stayed on to the last moment and then he's indicted while he's, uh, you know, still working for them. Well, that's how it normally that. is. That's how it normally is, as you as you just alluded to. But what I'm just saying is based upon. Of the fact that, like, you know, again, we st we're still not there yet. Yes, he has resigned, but yet he still has an influence. But, and again, he's a majority stockholder, but r For correct now. me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. That if the company, including Nick Khan, including all the people that are on the board, can still have some type of executive power to relieve him of any influence, which, by the way, he did that himself, but... Is there any way of one shape, uh, shape or form in terms of them as a board getting more and more control of those stocks? Yes, they could. And if they needed to, they could sue. It's the same thing with like what happened with Twitter and stuff. Is that technically uh, stockholders could sue management and take control over it uh, using several different laws that exist? Uh, you know, for this oh, sort wow. of situation. But, but, but the thing is, go ahead. I was just going to say, if the if the business decision affects the bottom line um, of the stockholders and works against their interests, and I know that's a broad term because that's exactly how they use it, um, they have the ability to take legal action, even if they're not like even if they don't amount to the majority of uh, the the shareholders. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know who Jerry McDivitt is, go watch the Dark Star of the Ring documentary when they did uh, the snippets of the steroid trial. This guy is a freaking boss when it comes to being a, uh, a legal expert and has practically gotten Vince out of more trouble than he could possibly. Even Ric Flair. I mean, that plane ride from hell, like Jerry McDivitt was huge in trying to help out Ric Flair not go to jail or any other type of like, you know, firings. But the thing is, you know, JR said in the interview in that episode where, you know, because he was a made guy, because you can't, you can't just fire a legend, especially a year after them buying, um, WCW, but still though it's it still is a moral issue, and yet with Vince, chickens are coming home to roost when it comes to this because now they're going to refer to past cases. Which, by the way, all those allegations even back in the night in the early nineties, those were not even the main issue. The main issue was the steroid stuff, and then all this other stuff started coming out. And of course, Vince had to change his image and make it the new generation. And of course, it was not the best period in uh, WWE for a, for a long while until the Attitude Era kicked in. But uh, yeah, this the concept that uh, it was the greatest crazy time week. we're living right now. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. Like, dude, the only way this would have been the greatest week if there was a financial like leap, like let's say like a billion dollar leap, a five hundred million dollar leap in stocks or, or in some type of you know merchandise, record, record viewership, uh, right. ticket sales, yeah, right? Nothing. The nothing. only thing, the only thing that this could really accomplish, other than 
you know, maybe the potential for creative like change if if for some reason Bruce Pritchard were to get axed or whatever the fuck, you know, that's the only thing that really I could see there would be a net positive is if yo like, Joe. Go ahead, finish up. Finish up. I'm no, sorry. no, 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 no. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. No, no. I was just gonna say, like, Joe, let, let's talk about Bruce Pritchard for a second. He <laughs> like fuck great. what he has to say. <laughs> no, amazing. dude. No, seriously. I oh, want to hear. Great. I want to hear. I want to hear. But it's just like with with Bruce Pritchard, like he's given a lot of contributions uh, due to fo- popular belief. He has done a lot of contributions. Most importantly, yes. the Undertaker Kane. Yes. storyline he had a right. lot of say in that one well that well that's why like, dude, one of the you, best produced stories do you remember so many people were so happy and excited that bruce pritchard was coming back and then yes. they were like yeah. oh and then people yeah. just turned on him um well here's the reason why because again he was one of the very close people with vince you know especially back in the uh in the earlier you know years now granted people say that he's stuck in the 80s or the early 90s whatever Again, he's still – yeah, he's part of a different generation that's not up to par with everything because everything is more fast-paced. Everything is more um, you know, accepted based around wrestling style or personality or what have you. But through the modern pop culture references and stuff like that, again, it's still wrestling regardless Bro, of you know the sports stop, entertainment stop. moniker. What's up? Brother Ro, stop. Uh... No. Nope. So, Mr. Pico, how you doing, Barry? Rather? Oh, Pico, what's good, Pico? Doing fucking brother love. God damn it, brother so also, love. People, people, they might people fire people me. Oh, then I you know, love the, you. the Saudi deal. I don't understand why people are like, oh, what's going to happen with the Saudi deal? It's going to get It's going to continue. It's gonna continue fucking, right. And then it's going to run contract. up, and they're not going to resign. Well, yeah, dude, you they know, have a contract. That's seven, that's seven years from now. We'll see yeah. what happens because if it, if it, if the price is right, I don't give a fuck if it is fucking um, uh, Stephanie who's running shit. She'll fucking show they'll up in Saudi Arabia it. in a hijab. She they'll she's they'll, they'll, they'll extend home. it. They'll extend it. Yeah, and again with women especially like going over there. Like now the fact that they think they're, they're saving the world. Of course they're going to go over. They don't care about what they do. They think that they're going over there and making an influence on those people and bringing the Western culture to them. So they they've got that narrative and excuse laid out. So you know and they're trying to do the same thing in China. They've been trying to do that for the past like uh, five, seven, ten years. China. We're trying to build. We're trying China. to build relationships with China and Beijing and like try to have WWE shows over there. And I'm like, well, every time we do try to like, you know, produce that really, there's no fruit that comes from it. it you've gotten more out of Saudi Arabia and India than you've gotten out of China. I mean, I, mean, and I don't know what the relationship is like. with Exactly. Yeah, I remember I remember that um, although it was not really mentioned too loudly, um, uh, Shane went over and worked with China to try to establish some sort of market there for for wrestling. And, you know, it's. It, they did have a few things that were going on, but certainly never got to the level that it could have. And obviously, the Saudi Arabia deal and India. India is a huge untapped market. Right? Yes. Under, right. Under, yes. Underserved market, I should say. It's not like they don't go there, but if they did more shows, my God, th- those Indians love it. Well, and remember, remember, great Kali, even we love though he's, it. A, you know, he's a Hall of Famer <laughs> and he's still so over there. Murderer. Dude, he's still in a, in a great relationship with WWE and has done a lot for Indian wrestling. He even runs a wrestling school in India, doesn't he? That's right. Yep. That's right. And again, a lot of people, even in Impact Wrestling, even in AEW, there's still some Indian connections that are, again, they're trying to bring more wrestling over there and try to get more, um, you know, again, whether it be sponsorships from, you know, multi millionaires or billionaires that are over there. And they're just trying to do good business. But again, at this point right now, with Vince not being in the chair, I'm curious to know. And again, w- people have been talking about this too, where sponsorships, how's that going to you know, work? But dude, there hasn't been any major sponsorship failures since no. even the allegations were brought out. So right now, everything is still looking good money-wise, I would assume. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. No, they're still making the most money they've ever made. I mean, obviously the wrestling yeah. has been shit, but that that's why the wrestling is shit because all they've ever cared about recently is money. Is they'll make the most money. That's all we care. That's it's a big thing. business. I yeah. mean, but yeah, Vince has been horrible in the creative. Like, but this you is the main. Look at where they're making their money from merchandise, the Saudi deal, contracts with the, the, the network. The merch yeah. barely yeah. makes it's, anything yeah, though. Exactly the streaming, the streaming deals with the yeah, network. Every, no, everything is a business deal. The merch, everything related to the wrestling is everything, everything but the product. 
Except for the right. Fox deal, everything has been shit, pretty much. That's like right. me. That's like me going to a fast food chain. It looks great on the outside, but the food is just going to make me, you know, fat and green more pounds on the inside. And no, not it, really no. Caring. Let me that's give you the it example. Is. It would be Bad like ass. this: you, you call, people still go to Taco Bell. It's exactly, but it's like you call your restaurant. You call your restaurant cocksuckers, and everybody thinks that name is so funny. That they all flock to cocksuckers. Everybody all over Especially America. Sally and it's a chicken and, restaurant. And they've got all this upselling stuff in the place. Hey guys, you can come in here and wear a wear a penis suit because it's called cocksuckers. Get how funny it is. Why am I echoing? What is that? Hello. That was weird. Anyway, uh, so you can wear a penis suit. Then you can do this and that. And then like they make a shitload of money. But but really the experience is terrible. Like the waiters and the service suck. The food sucks. So the food sucks and the waiter and service sucks. So the cock sucks. But but because it's called cocksuckers, everyone's like, oh my god, it's so crazy. And you make a deal for like shitty real estate somewhere, and you make this giant business deal. So you make a ton of money because of that, and you like you buy this land, and then you charge people to rent off the land, and yet you're you keep doing the business, but it has nothing to do with how you're making money. It's the same. It's a bad analogy, but I'm terrible at them. But the bottom line it's is the same monopoly as most fast food chains in america i mean right. yeah but i don't know man i mean the food tastes pretty good and usually it's quick so that's not really like you go to the food chain and you pretty much get quick quickly you get the big mac and it tastes pretty good even though it's bad for you so no that you know it doesn't work but at wwe you watch wwe on tv and you're like this sucks how are they how are they making more money than ever before oh the tv deals the uh, the deal over in Saudi Arabia. no well the merchandise again is barely it's not even close to what it used to make them so it's no, not but, still, but but again a big injection of that money was from the saudi well, deal so yeah so it's it's, it's it's actually kind of obfuscating where their money is really coming from are they making a profit yes but is that a big a big portion of that just the Saudi deal? If you took that away, where would they be? That's what people need to be looking at. Yeah, and also, mind you, all these super shows that they're doing, I mean, not even just in Saudi, but I remember uh, when they did the Brothers of Destruction versus DX, I think that was in Australia. Uh, there was a few well, other they, ones. The first one was Triple H versus Undertaker in Australia, and the second oh, one, was, where the one. It was Brothers of Destruction versus DX was Saudi. Okay. Got yeah. you, got you. Yeah, which yeah, yeah. You're right. Off the Australia show. Right, right. So they're doing all these super shows, which I don't, I don't. I mean, again, I understand why they would do them because I remember, like, when they would go over overseas, um, they would have big shows, but they wouldn't capture it on film or they wouldn't do it on a live pay per view because at the time, you know, you wouldn't be able to watch it at a certain point. But now that they had their own network, they can do that and control the narrative. No pun intended. But mm -hmm. now with the premium live events mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, again, they, they practically have a great deal with Peacock, even though I don't like the actual uh, streaming service as a whole. But it is what it is. that they, They've made their bed. They've lied in it. But unfortunately, the product, as far as the content, has suffered for well, more than 10 years. Not just that, as Rustafa, because when they launched the WWE Network, the stock went from $10 up to $94. Ooh. All right? And then, then when everything was coming down and the stock was down around $28, $30, whatever it was, they did the Peacock deal and the stock went oh. back up to 50 something dollars. So it's like there's always this next thing to go to to make a huge business deal. If only they could figure out how to do that with the wrestling, they really can't. You know, that's the thing. I think I think like the last major program, and I'm only going to speak for myself on this, the last major program that I felt could have been – like at least a decent enough product to at least last us for about a good five, 10 years would have been Daniel Bryan, AKA Brian Danielson and CM Punk. That could have been a rivalry like Sean and Brett. Now would it have drawn Austin rock numbers? No. Would it at least kept the product from sinking to like 1.9 ratings? Absolutely. It would have, especially since that, as time went on, the trust factor was going up on these guys' stock. But the next thing you know, Brian gets injured and gets out for about two years and comes back. Punk's gone. And this is right around the time when the network was coming into play, about a month after Punk had left. And nobody was making money off the pay-per-views anymore. Right. So everything was changing at that point. And, this, and remember, the summer of Punk should have been the, ch the changing of the guard in 2011. You would think. If Punk. Yeah. Well, no, but. I'm saying no, because yeah, that had, him and Daniel Bryan were a lightning rod for what should have changed, and it didn't. Yeah, 
And also right. include Zach Ryder on that, Matt Cardona as well, because he could have, based upon the way he should have been booked, that Garden show should have been when he won the U.S. title and then take it to another place from there and could have basically done what he's been doing in NWA and other territories even right now if given the opportunity. But didn't happen. And then for the next, like, 10 years, we were in this, like – Oh, we want what we want. We're going to give you the fans what they want, but not really. Then we're going to try back because we know better than the fans. How what about they that want when they, they came you know? out there? We've been over this a million times, but how about that when they came out and said, you know, there's some difference coming. We know what you guys want change and all that yeah, other weird yeah. stuff. What the yeah, hell? Yeah, it was called NXT. It was called NXT. And no, it, it already, well it already had happened. That already was happening at that time. Right? Oh, was it? What was that? Twenty eighteen when they announced that? Yeah, it was wrong? already. They, they were talking about the main roster, and, and they didn't do a shit. They, they then they no, then they, they didn't brought do anything. They brought NXT. And, and that, the, no, they ju- that was when they brought up Ricochet. Yeah, and then and then eventually the pandemic came and practically reshuffled the deck. But even so, dude, even the first episode of Dynamite during the pandemic in the first start of March, they did a way better job than when Austin came and there was no audience because all they had to do was call up the wrestlers in the back, both baby faces and heels, and they were out in the audience, and it still made the product better. How can you literally say that, you know what I mean, AEW wasn't a threat, even though it, as far as well, ratings it, go? It took, it took it NXT tr- out. Yeah, it be, yeah, dude, it was because of the influence. It was because of the large pocket of indie people that were already internet sensations as well as, you know, winning fans over literally in the little buildings all around the country and mm-hmm. practically changed the direction in the sense of here are these guys that said that they want to be top stars. They have the ability to now because now they're on a major network, which is TNT, Turner's network. And, um, you know, the wrestling, I mean, it's not a wrestling, necessarily wrestling war, but it's definitely a, you know, a wrestling competitive atmosphere that we hadn't had since WCW got, you know, Hungry Hungry hippo by WWE. <laughs> you raised a piece of no. shit. Oh. Cheers to the Joe Cronin Nation. Yo. Botch Club on Instagram and TikTok. Guys. Acknowledge the Wrestle Daily on oh, both yeah. platforms. Go follow them, man. I'm telling you, they're at 30,000 followers on Instagram. They're awesome. Yes, they're, they're fun. Awesome. Botch Club and the Wrestle Daily on Instagram and TikTok. Go check out Botch Club. They're great. Uh, so Dave, I, the tr- now, the, you uh, go ahead. Oh, I just thought. Now, no, I, I, now I have a question. Yes. Uh, with, with with Triple H coming back into his EVP talent or relations role, um, do you think that that might cause him to uh, get his hands back into NXT and maybe change things up? He's again? back in NXT already with Sean. Oh, is he? Is he? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is cool. he? Yeah, I no, thought Sean of- was taking it full time. No, 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 no. That sh- sh- Triple H went out. He got. He had to take obviously for his heart condition. Um, he took the time off. Uh, later explained why. Um, the fact that he got re- he was returning so soon, even after like you know everything was happening with Vince. I was well, he returned, like, but right. now he, now he's not going to be able to run it. Well, no, not not like remember he's not running it by himself. He has help. You know, he has help down there with a lot of people. And again, I don't know. I mean, I know Michael Cole does a lot of production, you know, coaching over there, especially with a lot of the guys that are coming up, not just on the um, on the commentary side, but other production staff as well. He's become a big fixture there. And then um, there's other, you know, people that are there. That it, Again, it's a team effort here. I don't think it's just going to be Triple H running the whole damn system on his own. Right. You know, but uh, uh, Dave, are you still with us? Yeah. Yeah, I know he had no Dave. Sadly. He had notes he wanted to get to. He got Dave, to Dave, go back to your notes, man, because actually you you brought up a great point earlier. Um, Just go back to your notes, Dave. Well, what point is he talking about? No, no, no you were talking about how um, the, basically with the Saudi deal, but that I was yeah. leading into something else. Well, I, what I was basically saying is that people are too quick to, to – judge this whole situation like oh they, a woman is running a company she's clearly going to cut this off they've they're, they're they've got seven years left mm-hmm. on that deal but uh, i mean what's good about it is the last two saudi shows have at least been decent or good yes yeah. that's true i mean because bad oh, but go ahead Dave. but regardless is that a lot can change in seven years especially since they have been you know, uh, allowing women to to drive there, and you know, initially when Sasha first showed up there, I think she had to have a full covered bodysuit. Oh, they now, still have to. Yeah, they still no, do. but they they sort of opened that up a little bit, where it was a little bit more 
liberal yeah, like what wise. their ankle you know what they should do is no, they, they should... i think they did like a it wasn't like a full like shirt t-shirt thing this last time i think it was like a ankle like a more like a like a morph suit type deal they but should have a hole really right in the crotch they should be completely covered but a hole in the crotch that'd be great <laughs> yeah you know that happened in Italia once Crotchless. oh yeah not surprised Things Not, can change, she, and she I don't purpose. think that, you know, it's just like people just pile it on thinking, oh, well, the Saudi deal is off now, just are insane. I mean, this is, again, no. why I was saying that uh, a big portion of their of their funds are coming in from, from that deal, so it kind of uh, confuses things as to where their money's coming from. Imagine if they didn't have that deal. You know, how could you, like, where would their the majority of their revenue be coming from, you know? Literally from the arenas. Well, how much confidence would they, that give the you know the the investors? They want to see more partnerships and stuff, obviously. And you know these sorts of deals spur the price of of the uh, of the stock. So again, I, JD says, "Oh, best week ever." Okay, what about um, you know on Monday? How is that going to affect the stock? Because technically, I, you make your money by reviewing WWE. And uh, if that goes away, what are you going to do? That's a good but, question to bring up. Is Do you think the stock's going to go up or down by the end of uh, the day or a few days? Who, who can we, say? You don't I mean, know I mean, the Monday. Stock, the stocks went up a little bit on Friday, but not much. It wasn't much at all. But this Then is I guess that could just be predicting that it could go up on Monday. Gustavo, I do believe that there is, a, like I said, this is in preparation to further litigation that comes down the line. The best thing for him to do is separate as much as possible from the brand, uh, prepare for that, uh, prepare his arguments, all that crap, and uh, be willing to sell in case these you know, shareholders see that uh, this is going to make them look bad. You know, make so, so, Dave, bad. so Dave, this is a question for you. If this, in fact, does go to court, which I believe it will, will he beat this thing? I don't know, because I think there's more and more stuff coming out. Plus, there are people that are digging for old shit as well. You know, old shit. Shit that's been already settled. Because, you know, one of the, you know, this recent woman that came out, uh, he paid her off. They had an affair, paid her off. That was it. She was fine with it. But, but the thing is, though, she accepted the money and knew that this was happening and then of course like you know because again he, it, technically this would be legal because she was a component and accepted it but then again there can also be some other things that can happen legally that maybe her lawyers can possibly you know bring to the table so again yeah, it's going to be an from what i've read it's yeah. not her that's doing it I, I from what i read it was because these allegations were found out they're being brought up and as such it's, it's being probably nick khan bro he wants to take the goddamn company over well, we haven't confirmed that yet if it was Nick Khan. No, but, but I mean, I think that somebody's leaking this shit from the inside. Definitely. It, that's Absolutely. the only Absolutely. possible. That's I think that's like the only plausible explanation is that somebody on the board said something to the Wall Street Journal, and that's why it came out. And the only person I think would do that is Nick. I don't of, think it would be Shane. I don't think I mean, it would be Stephanie. But maybe it, it would be Bruce. Unless he, you know, but then why would he be co-CEO with Steph? And like, so maybe, I mean, it, it, I guess it looks that way to us, right? It looks right. bad that Nick Khan, this guy keeps getting more power, more power, more power, more power. And they seemingly just go with it. More power, more power. So, I mean, maybe it's another entity somewhere else that is doing it, but he has the most to gain and he's gained the most. So that's why it's falling on him. Now, could it be somebody else in the company that's sick of him? Could it uh, we fucking could be Linda? Imagine if it was Linda. She's like, all right, you piece of shit. <laughs> Vince screwed you Vince. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Imagine that. <laughs> it would be can you imagine long. that? Oh my they god! Relive, they relive an old Attitude Era wrestling angle, and they put that out on like every <laughs> newscast. Sports. And, yeah, I wanted to screw my husband. Oh like, my god! Not, not literally, but figuratively. It actually happened. The, uh, the 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 tagline would be: "It's not a work." <laughs> it's not a work. It's not a work this time. This time it's this real. This is the greatest day in the history 
of the company. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> this is the greatest day in the history. It's the best day in the history of WWE today. My God. If you're a retard, if it is. How much imaginary yeah, we heard what happened in the Philippines? His imaginary Mustang. You know what? It was the greatest day when he purchased his automatic Mustang, too, yeah. Oh, no, I, I think I think JD is looking at this from a completely myopic. Fuck the kids! I'm gonna fuck okay. your kid! <laughs> oh my god! I think he's just um, saying the wrong. He's saying the wrong thing. It's it's a great day, and it's probably one a, of the greatest days. It's no, I don't think he's just day. retarded. Oh, well, no. he's saying it because he knows it's gonna rile up his base and what they want to hear. Well, I, I don't th I don't agree. I don't one hundred percent agree with that because I think a lot of my base is his base or similar people. I think he literally yeah. is saying this. I mean, what I mean, like you're saying, it's the greatest day. It's just a stupid dude. It's a dumb thing to say. I, I don't. It, I don't hear. It's a, it's, it's, a it's a perceptional point of view, but I just don't agree with it. Only because, again, if you're saying this is the greatest day because Vince is gone from a creative standpoint, I mean, again, I I would celebrate in a way with you. But at the end, no, of the because day, 1998 was better you know, than any, than anything that's ever going to happen. 95 was right. Was, I mean, dude, 90, 1991 is better than right now, so it can't be the greatest day. Unless well, in terms of the, in terms of the main roster product, absolutely. NXT even itself has slipped in performance in a lot of ways. It's different. It, the launch for the 2.0 didn't help any favors. Right. Um. I feel. I feel honestly that we're not going to really see real change, especially with this huge move from Vince being in the chair, both from an executive as well as a creative standpoint. And so, like, maybe, like, three to five years. Because it's going to take a long time to build some new guys to be legitimate contenders in terms of boosting the ratings and merchandise all simultaneously. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's it's And here's the other thing you could say. It's it's the greatest day for NXT probably since NXT was good. You know, you could say that. Like, that I would say, yeah, I agree with that. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sean and Triple H have creative liberty to do what they need to now since that Vince is not over their shoulder. That's true. So also think of it this way too. Even if it is Bruce Pritchard or it's somebody else that is in charge of creative, at the end of the day, who really made the Attitude Era work, especially when it came to coming up with ideas that went against the grain of the networks that WWE were on? DX. These are the guys that practically – and the click in general – Right. change the business direction so who's to say that they still can't have a legitimate argument with pritchard about a creative direction especially I, they, when it comes to a, like i like a star. i like bruce pritchard in some fashion in the wwe but they got to get him out of there as far as control and being on the top he's a great guy to keep time of the show if he was to do that he'd be great at being in gorilla to make sure things run right but he they got it creatively they got to move him you know kind of out of power you know well so what, i was I, I was in, Joe, I was in, I was in agree, agreement with you what you said earlier. You know, maybe downplay his role to be like a creative consultant and not right. so much the head of creative because he has good ideas. I mean, like yes. he came up with with a lot of stuff in the in the in the day that was top notch shit. But you know, having him as the head of that, I think. Especially with him being in Vince's ear so much. Well, that's the problem. Is Vince could be control? Do who knows what right. Vince could be doing with him? Yeah, probably the worst thing that I've seen since Bruce came back and since the Vince has still been in control the was Otis. the Hell in a Cell with Seth Rollins and the Fiend. Oh, yeah. We can all agree. We can all agree that that was that stunk up the joint, and everybody was tuning <sighs> AEW. Rosenberg yeah. loved that. Well, what I didn't like about. The thing that I didn't like the most was the money in the bank that night. They went to the top of the building, and they did all those yeah. those gags on the way up. You know that was right. And out Bruce Prichard was in that too. Yeah, well, because he wrote the whole thing. But here's Wait, the, and he was brother love. But here's the thing about that. I do give him a little bit of you know. I get it. It was a weird time. There's no crowd. They were trying to do, you know. And I was even saying on the show like do all these weird things and you could and so we kind of were saying that it was just the things they did were so lame like that was the problem G good idea to do these little things on the side there was a couple things that were good but yeah but mostly it was like that was dumb you know but yeah so dave oh i'm sorry i'm sorry Joe. no go ahead bring dave's got notes man he's got a big note pad well, I, I wanted to bring up paul Heyman's name do you have that in your notes oh shit no. <laughs> can you talk about paul Heyman and how like you know where does he fit in all this from the creative standpoint? And if so, could he potentially take Bruce Pritchard's job? 
Uh, yes. Yes, I do believe that uh, there could be enough influence from Triple H on Steph to push it in that direction. I think they have more confidence in in him and actually bringing the ship back under steerable course as opposed to because again Pritchard's been there for a while and really not producing anything that uh, makes them stand out. But, yeah, but you, this is but this is the thing that I'm actually more concerned with, or not not concerned, but more so interested in. Now we always knew that even before Paul Heyman had left WWE back in 2006, I think it was, there was a lot of conflict between him and Vince and Stephanie, especially when it came mm -hmm. to creative, especially mm -hmm. with the the burnout of the uh, WWE's version of ECW. Um, if Paul were to take the reins of this thing, what's going to make this relationship work on a professional level in comparison to what happened almost 20 years ago? I mean, are they still on good terms? Because I thought that Paul and Stephanie were on generally pretty good terms. Pretty good terms now, but I'm just talking about like, you know, if Paul were to go into that creative role, especially head of creative. I think Stephanie likes would, Paul more than Bruce. I would think so, yes. At didn't, this point, you know, didn't Stephanie fire Bruce Pritchard? Yes, over a gun, I think. Right? Yeah, a gun. He said something about a gun. What brought, the fuck? He brought his gun. I did not know this story. He brought his gun. Yeah. To, he brought his gun to work or something. What yep. the fuck? Yeah, he admitted that on his <laughs> podcast with uh, to, uh, with uh, Conrad Thompson. Huh. Yeah, Bruce brought a gun to work because of whatever. He, he said and, he was going to pull out the Glock on Vince. Yeah, and it's Stephanie, clock a clock. Stephanie freaked it's out. Clock clock. It's clock a clock, man. <laughs> it's clock a clock, that's, motherfuckers. Remember when Arn Anderson was bringing out the the gun references? We we're like, he has to have that oh, song. Oh man, I would have said, I man. For that. Right, <laughs> uh, bring up a goddamn, uh, bring up, a, get him that song. I would have contacted that guy and said, Arn Anderson's new song. Imagine Arn coming out, fucking, it's clock a clock, and he's, dude, it would be so <laughs> over. It would be unreal. You know, if I, oh my God, dude, if I was in wrestling, but then they'd be like, oh, we don't want to talk about guns and things like that. Anyways, back to Dave's notes. Yes, <laughs> back to Dave's notes, man. He's got uh, copious notes. ones. Oh, well, yeah, so I, what? Somebody have something to say? No, I think it's nope. feedback. Uh, okay, so yeah, the Saudi deal, I think people just jumped on it too quick. They got to wait for things to, to pan out. Um, look for the stock prices on Monday to see what, uh, what happens there, because that's going to be a testament as to uh, the confidence that uh, investors have in the stock, whether or not they sell or buy. And maybe, um, again, if there's enough confidence that uh, Vince McMahon is gone, um, there will be other people that will start buying the stock. We won't know until we see this. And there really hasn't been any uh, official uh, announcement regarding direction from this point forward. Again, creative. Yes, you know, we know Pritchard's in there in that position, but we don't have usually like what they have after a shakeup like this where they have a uh, official press release where they say, okay, well, this person's going to do this, this person's going to do that, and and so forth. So, it, you know, there's still nothing that's... And that might actually cause the investors some sort of trepidation just for the fact that they're not getting in... Unless they're getting maybe an email from the company, they're not getting anything... And, and potential investors as well who don't have stock, they're not getting any information as to how this, you know, retirement is going to affect the product. What, what, yeah. Okay, answer answer me this: If you're, you know, considering investing in a in a stock, and you're considering WWE, um, this recent announcement, what gives you the confidence that you want to invest in it? Do, do nothing, you... nothing. Like, like, for yeah, example, I'm worried about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't I'm know what to do here. Put, uh, let's say, uh, like. Uh, Let's say if I wanted to put like literally hundreds, if not maybe a couple thousand within a stock that I have nothing or nothing to do with or know about, especially if I'm not a fan of the business, that is the poorest move you can do as an investor. Okay. Because especially if you don't see anything come out of that, like maybe just like sprouts of stuff, that means mm. nothing in the long run. Do you want to see that? Let, let me tell you something. Uh, it's it's also at a very tough, uh, persp uh, a tough uh, amount. Because the WWE stock is very volatile. Like, it's very, in my opinion, it's a very weird stock, right? So, because I've owned yeah. the stock. I've watched it. I've always watched it. I invested 
right before the network, knowing it would go up. And it went from about 10 bucks to about $94. Um, I sold most of my shares at about 60 Now the stock is at $66, which is up previously. <laughs> now we look at the last five years. You know, right there is the network stuff here. You know. Are you displaying it, Joe? Yeah. Oh, let me show you. Yeah. So playing on a Discord because I. It, it's trending upward right now. It's trending upward. So here's the thing: we know WWE stock can hit ninety ninety dollars. It's hit ninety bucks before a couple of times. Um, I think when they launched the the network, it was up pretty high, and uh, and here it is. Yeah, two at twenty bucks. See, they don't even have it on the scale yet. Because because the scale was about 2015 or so or 14 or maybe actually 13 14 15 one of those years when they launched the network, it went up very yeah. high. So anyway, the bottom line is it came crashing down to about 30 bucks at one point. It went up and up and up. It's been on a slow climb, and so because of the pandemic. Yeah, but it's a risky. It's a yeah. It's a but it's a it's like people probably would start investing right now to see if it would go up. But WWE tends to go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So that's what she said. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's a very, it's at a very. Yeah, Vince sort of, did too. Vince went up, down, up, down on them paralegals. Uh, I mean, look at it. See, look, you can see this is a year's history. See this up, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 down. Xavier Woods must like it, given his channel's name, up, up, down, down. It is trending upward though in the past year, so that's interesting. Damn, nobody happens, liked my uh, jokes. Joe, Joe, what happens if you click max? What? What, where does, how far does that go up to? Mm. Oh, 2003. Okay. Yeah. So so you see this spike right here in 2014? That's the WWE Network. So I, I believe. Yep. So nine bucks here. Yeah. That This is when I bought it. Nine right bucks there. for a fuck. So, <laughs> 2018, I believe, was the first Saudi show. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So around that time? Yep. So the tightest on you one? Yep. Yep. Titus World Slide. So now, if, so if you're <laughs> if you're an investor, you're pretty happy. Like if you're a stockholder right now, you're happy, right? And you, especially if you're a long time investor, I mean, dude, you are so happy. Look at this trend upwards. Look at that line from left to right, from the year 2012 to to, to where it is now. Like as an investor, like you're pretty fucking happy with this. And then, of course, that was like the beginning of like a lot of firings as well, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Well, yeah. It's going up. So, uh, you know, Monday, I, I would, you know, I don't know what it's going to do, man. I'm very curious. I think it's going to go up, though. I think it's actually going to go up Monday. How far do you think it'll go up? Not much, though. Not, it'll not, probably, be, yeah. it'll probably like probably, maybe a few points. Not a lot. Maybe a few yeah. points. Either way, it's a, it's a point that should be taken in consideration, you know, because... JD is so myopic and short-sighted. It's like, oh, this is the greatest week. And blah, blah. It's like, think about the brand that currently employs you, basically. You know, right. like, you know it, it, without them, you would have nothing. So, you know. Uh, what the hell is that? Who just nutted on themselves? Yeah. <laughs> it's Mikhail. Oh, God. Oh, oh Mikhail. No, no, no. Fuck. No, no. Fuck. You gun, gun. That's messed up. That's so messed up. Yo, Mikhail, what's Stop going on? Stuffer. What's going on, Mikhail? How you doing, bro? We're all messed up. Mikhail, do you do you agree this is the greatest week in WWE history? This is the greatest day in the history of the company. Do you agree this is the greatest day in the history of the company? It's got his tongue. Oh, you your mute? microphone is off, dude. You're muted. Why don't you go to some other show and talk to somebody? <laughs> you right. have cool. thumbs. Let's just mute him. That's it. You get muted. Uh, Vince McMahon. Uh, so I think Monday, yeah, it's going to go up a little bit. You see the project the projections, though. They do have projections. but So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I don't know. It's going to go up a little, then go down, and whatever this projection is. Honest, honestly, we're really not going to see any real results until, like, maybe, like, maybe towards, like, the end of the year. But even then, it's going to be, like... Not much in comparison, because again, until until we figure out after the allegations are over with and the court dates are over and this and that, we're really not going to know the direction fully of where the company is going to go with or without Vince. Yeah, where it's going to take uh, it's going to take the next thirty to sixty days to really start understanding, and then 
And then it's gonna. And then you know what? What if not a lot changes and it seems the same? And that then we'll start talking That's about. What I'm how, saying. Oh, he's still in. He's, what, he's still controlling everything from home. Like what? What kind of ego it, is it's that? The be- you- it's the greatest chess play. It's the greatest chess play in, in in wrestling business history. Period. Here's a guy who practically bought up all the territories, or all the territories folded, and he got in control of them. And got all the television networks, has created a worldwide business relationship with various other partners all around the world, trademarked everybody's name and likeness, owns all the music that everybody has ever, almost all the music everybody's ever owned They need to get CFO the fuck, they need to get CFO back. Go get CFO back. They were the best music Bro. makers that you had besides Jim, obviously, but this sucks. The music production in WWE now has gone to shit. Dave, Dave, I'm telling you, Vince McMahon is the hungry, hungry hippo of sports entertainment. He gobbled up every natural resource until there was practically nothing left. Now there's all these other sprouts that are, you know, like AEW or other places that are not as territorial, but again, have a certain name and recognition, especially with the money backing some of these companies and have television networks and deals. Although they're smaller, at the end of the day, they're still out there as an alternative. But WWE is the biggest game in town, and now the change in the guard has happened. Well, um, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I mean, now it's like let's talk about the Grisham thing real quick. First of all, I I, I didn't even know about this until Joe reported it. Then I went on Twitter and I'm looking at this, and then allegedly he's saying or accusing Tony Khan of being racist. How is that even? Like how? How? Because he's in a, he's inadequate and a he's midget. Retarded. He's a midget person, and he has. He should go into midget wrestling. No, Tony's he's like small rings with jaguar players that are black. No, John Gresham Not never was over with the crowd. He he never had that. Impact he also has a retarded here. wife. Oh, that's who is his oh, wife? Whoa, shit. Why wow. are people shitting Jordan on his wife? Grace? Dude, people have I'm been bad. shitting on his wife all day, and I don't even know who she is. Some Jordan more, Grace, she's Grace, that out of Impact Wrestling. Jordan, yeah, Grace. she's the freaking one that's been disrespecting all the legends and like Chavo Guerrero, like chewed her oh. out over Twitter, and it was hilarious. See, so she so they're Ben right. yeah. So they're a couple yeah. of idiots. I mean, obviously. So there you go. Go work oh, in Impact Wrestling, you fucking I, idiot. It was the dumbest move to say, "Hey, I want my release because I'm losing a belt." Like, for example. If he do- had done like the Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels thing where he's like, okay, I'm not going to drop the title tonight. No, you're going to drop the title and I'll make sure you never get booked anywhere again if you were to do so. But yet, here's a guy who did the business, that business was done. And yes, could he have won the title back maybe at a later date down the road? Possibly, but we won't know because he just the thing wanted is, to go is that's how pro belt. wrestling works is people are going to, you're going to lose your belt someday. That's just how wrestling works is to put over the next guy. It's a time if he doesn't want to admit, If he doesn't want to admit that he doesn't want to lose, then he shouldn't be in the business because you're either a winner or you're a loser. And if you're a winner, you're going to lose at some point. And remember, it's wrestling. So if both people have a great match and get over and the crowd goes home happy, guess what? You won. But in this case scenario, he's like, all right, I'm going to take my ball and go elsewhere. If you want to go to Impact Wrestling, fine. You want a certain amount of money, fine. But you're not going to get the same exposure. That's the reality. Bro, his girl is bigger than he is. Yeah. Oh, dude, this guy's a weird oh, cop. God. Something. Nice Yo, what's up, Mikel? Oh. I think that I think that if You should Vince McMahon should make the cock bleed. Why do you sound like shit now? You sounded earlier good earlier. Why do you sound like you're underwater now? He's trying to drown himself because his mother's a crack whore. Oh wow! Dude. Oh my oh, God! Whoa! Yeah. Wow! Jesus! I'm turning heel tonight. There's boys. nine thousand people that are gonna stand up and say, "Fuck Rick Flair!" Go ahead, Mikel. I'm sorry. What were you saying? I think Bentley man retired. They did what made your king not. Running, 
but he tell him that what to do. Yeah, so he's not he really was, retired. It's all a ruse. He they, they're saying he's yeah. retired, but he's at, he's going to be at home with a command center telling them what yeah. to do because he's got that kind yeah. of ego that he's still got to run it. Rangers, yeah, I get it. <laughs> you know, I mean, even Triple H <laughs> yeah. has like a little webcam to the performance center from his office wherever he's at. Yeah, he, right. he always has a twenty four seven view on the performance center, and and Bruce can be sitting there now. Why Vince McMahon wouldn't be like, all right, I'm really going to walk away. I don't know, but so he really wants to run it from home, and he's well, going to tell Bruce Joe, to his ear. His memo, Joe. He said in his memo that he's going to be watching. So I'm only assuming he's going to have eyes and ears wherever you know there's going to be a webcam of some kind. So he'll definitely be watching over. All the you know shenanigans and uh, the uh, general formats of you know production as well as business on the side as well. Do a little He's practically basketball the, the dance Godfather off the concrete, the right? I mean, oh. I'm just so sick of you, little meth head, devil worshippers. This is the, the goon. goon. I'll be honest; I'd like to take it's a, a big bite name. out of your face. Gresham and Grace have short people anger problems. Grace should shut up and suck cock. Oh, I agree. Amen. I agree, Goon. I I think this the, these the, first of all this lady, this bitch has said some dumb shit in the last couple of months. Oops. Fuck her. And this guy's a moron too. And good luck in fucking Impact Wrestling, you fucking midget mongoloid. So oh, yeah, fuck. Oh, I've had fuck. about enough of stupid. So they can fuck themselves. Uh, well, oh what, what Tommy? What'd you say, Tommy? You know what? Uh, I, I, I did. came in a bowl and your mother drank cum soup from me. <laughs> yeah, I hope your mother drinks cum soup from me. You ever think about that? You raised a piece of shit. Thank you, Goon, for dropping the $3. And thank you, too. That doesn't add time to the clock, though, unfortunately. There is seven minutes left in this show. Beat the clock. Sunday night special show because of all this stuff going on. And it is Sunday night, beat the clock. Uh, Vince McMahon is still the hot topic. Hey, this makes a week that Dave is back, right? Uh, yeah, about a week since he's come back for the 13th time. 13th time back. It's amazing. Is he not in here anymore? Where'd he go? He probably got he sick all out. of you guys. There's too many of you guys. Probably Good. Too many I hate people. him. I hate Dave. He saw that I was coming in was like, oh, fuck that. Well, I'm glad you hate him because, you know, he hated on me for about three years. So. Yeah, then why would he want to come back? Because he he's got just using you. He's got nobody else. So, so Joe, do you do you and uh, JD <laughs> have legit beef, or is this just like? No, I'm just. Com I mean, he comments on WWE and tears them up for an hour. I'm commenting on what he said, and and honestly, it's what everybody said. Is so many people, not everybody, but a lot of people, on Twitter were saying this, and a lot of people were saying this around. And I was like, where the fuck is this coming from? And then I saw his title, and I was like, oh, he, what the fuck is he talking about? Best week ever in WWE. What do you want, crack? So, like, I took issue with that. That's a retarded thing to say. So, like, I'm like, I'm going to make that the, the whole topic. I mean, I was going to be live tonight anyway, but that was the main topic. That's the reason. No, we don't, I mean, no, we don't really have beef. I mean, it just, he's, you know, he is what he is, and I am what I am, and whatever. Mikhail, what's up? Katie's just retarded. No, well, he's not retarded. It's just, that's a stupid thing. Are you wearing overalls? You look like Uncle Fester. What are you doing? Fuck you, Joe. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. You get you get one translation a night from me, okay? That fucking speech you gave earlier that I figured out what you said, that was one. Now I got now two. Fuck you, Joe Cronin. That's it. You're done. You fucking type into a translator at this point. God damn it. Hey, Joe. Bell's palsy, what? fucking cerebral palsy, whatever you got. Fuck it. The cerebral assassin, Mikhail. The cerebral assassin was what God did what? to your brain. <laughs> Do you think about that? Yeah, no, what? Yeah. I don't know if he did. Bro, did I think about Brock Lesnar walking out? We don't know if he really did. I think they worked us. I do too. I think they worked us. I think they knew there was all these rumors anyway. I think they worked us. Maybe not, but I think they might have worked us on that, to be honest. That's That's basically it. Joe, did you see how many ratings that SmackDown, or how much it drew from this past SmackDown? Because I haven't checked yet. Just to see if the Vince stuff made it but yeah, go Mc up a little bit. Good call, Mikel, on that, by the way, buddy. Um, What was that? What would what, you just say, Asher? I was asking if you've seen the ratings for SmackDown yet to see if it went up or down based on the Vince stuff and how much it did. 
No, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen it. I'm sure it was up a little bit or it was pretty high. I don't know. Two million I would guess, maybe. Two point two. I don't know, I don't see any news on the SmackDown ratings. If anybody knows them, I didn't look at you know what's his face uh from Wrestling Observer usually has them? Uh, Alvarez. Alvarez? Yeah. He's usually good with those. Uh let's see. Um, it is just nope. dead air right now. Yeah, he has not said anything. That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. He hasn't said much, man. But uh, Maybe they don't want us to know. Maybe not. Three minutes left in the show, guys. If you want to keep Sunday night, beat the clock going. Otherwise, I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm going to watch Star Trek, man. I'm beat pumped the up. Shock. Dude, I know that I said oh, okay. uh, I know that so Picard has been bad. 2.17 but... million. 2.17. 2.1. Boom. So that's an improvement from last week? Or... A little bit, probably. Yeah. Because what, what was last week? One point nine. So. Yeah, it was like one point nine five, I think. Yep. There we go. But dude, the Star we're Trek uh, Next Generation crew is coming back. I'm pumped up, so I'm gonna go watch some Star Trek. Even though Picard season one and two are kind of pieces of shit, they announced you know season three, and dude, um, Worf looks like a fucking goddamn white haired crazy person. I love it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. What's up? Uh, you heard what happened in the Philippines? In the Philippines? What happened in the Philippines? Yeah, WWE, they canceled the show because the uh, people were trying to pay in bananas instead of money. Oh, come on, man. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> the only place they pay in bananas is in your little jungle, AJ Adams. Now oh shut up. Oh, my God. That's Two minutes yeah. left. Welcome Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Two minutes left and beat the clock. The donation link is at the top of the chat, or you can super chat, or the links are down below. Do whatever you want. Do whatever I've you got to do. I'm in a pretty pissy mood today. I'm sorry for ever anybody that I've made angry. I feel like I've well, been really mean Are today. you serious? If, if, if are I was like you, Asher, I will be too. Oh. <laughs> I bet uh, every time you look in the mirror, I bet, I bet every time you look in the mirror, you want to pull your eyes out and step on them. Here is the donation Jesus. list. I just wanted to say here's the donation list. Danny MT's girl, that's D. Welsh. He's in first. Uh, Todd Fair is the king of monetize this. The ghost from the coast in second, Yay. and Drew Bar in third place, man, uh, by a dollar over Negan. So that's pretty crazy. Shout out so to you guys. Talking about, so they're talking about going to India or something? You're going to go to India? <laughs> No WWE. That's when I go to India. Mm, no, because you know what, India didn't work. In India did not work well for WWE, and it didn't work well for Impact Wrestling either. It worked. Yeah. It was dead for everybody. They. Ah! Oh, Jesus. No, what Joe? the fuck was that? You want to know, know why, Joe? Well, how would you want to wrestle somebody who every time you hit them, sand comes off their back? But anyway. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, that's in middle. I really like that one. That's a Saudi oh my Arabia. God, bro! <laughs> you little sand coon. Oh, 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 Jesus oh no. hey, You know my, you know my dad. What? That's a cousin. I Damn. love the WWE. <laughs> are, you, are you smoking weed, Mikel? What are you doing? You know, you said pothead now. What's going on? That's not going to reverse what God did. even more. That's not going to reverse what God did to you. Okay. <laughs> it's not Wait a minute. You, you, you killed your you. mother and you're smoking her. Oh my god. Oh, you know what? I, I fucking came in a bowl and his mother drank cum soup from me. <laughs> did you, did you, I don't oh give a fuck about Vince McMahon. This is did the greatest game in the history or you, or of you the just, company. You got a pig. Oh. I don't give a fuck about Vince McMahon. You fucking you, you bitch. <laughs> This is the greatest day in the history of the company. Jamie's <laughs> voice is just so that. annoying. I'm gonna it's go so and give him a cat. I mean, this is I know what he's saying because he's yes. about it. You know, Joe, did, did you ever meet BJ, his cousin? Oh, Jesus oh God! I know his brother wanted to shoot one of my co-hosts once. Uh, oh, that's it. Oh, I mean, oh come on! What the hell? <laughs> All right, guys. Good night. Thanks for being here, brothers. Yes. I love you. I love you guys. I'm fuck your cat. All right. Jesus Christ. It was chaos in there in the last few minutes. Absolute chaos. Shout out to ADTR who donated earlier, man. Ghost from the Coast. Thank you, man. That was the biggest bomb of the night. $100. An absolute bomb. This show has gone nine hours before, eight hours, seven hours. 
the the quickest show was an hour, I think it was. The longest one was about nine to ten hours, I believe. And tonight we went two hours and thirty three minutes on Beat the Clock. And tonight it was Sunday night. Normally we're live on Saturday nights, guys. I'm live after every WWE Raw. I'm live after uh, AEW Dynamite. And I'm live. I'm live on Friday nights, of course, for Monetize This after SmackDown. And uh, Saturday nights is usually beat the clock. Right here, we do this every Saturday night. But we did it tonight because uh, we couldn't do it last night because last night we did Ring of Honor and we felt that was more focused on. So here we are. These were the topics we hit, man. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Thank you so much for uh, donating uh, tonight to keep the show on an extra hour and a half or two hours. Uh, the show is a half hour long usually, but you guys kept the, go the show going an extra two hours because of the donation. So thank you guys for that. It helps fund my show. It helps uh, fund what I do and keep me able to do this, obviously, so much. So much appreciated, and we have a lot of fun, and we get a lot of content out of it, I think. Thank you to everybody who went over to Patreon, man. We have 190 patrons on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Go check out the Patreon if you guys can, man, because that is it's full of podcasts that you've never heard, maybe. The Corrupted Podcast, me and my wife, and so much more. Other people, it's loaded with stuff. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Thank you to Mike Torian. He became a $25 producer. That is huge, man. A $25 producer. I will have the producers list out this Monday. Plus, um, uh, Irate became a $5 patron. Vincent, Broken Lion, and Adam H. all became patrons the other day. Uh, Joseph Bishop became a $50 mega producer. Thank you to Joe Bishop. You're a beast. Jay Carlos became a $2 patron. And uh, Sean Johnson became a $10 VIP. You will get the gold VIP badge on Discord. If you don't see it tomorrow, please hit me up in some kind of DM and tell me it didn't work. Huge Erection in the $5 spot. J-Man from KC. Oh, actually, J-Man from KC deleted his pledge. So J-Man from KC actually deleted his pledge. I'm sorry. Well, shout out to him anyway because he's he was a huge supporter of the show. Um, I thought he, I guess he left. Um, Asher became a $5 patron, even though he's on the show and JT pledged $5. Thank you for that. Solomon, how you doing, man? A Bowers, how are you, sir? And, uh, get wet, man. I really appreciate it, man. Love you all. Thanks to everybody that came on tonight, especially Rastafa, Asher, and, uh, Dave Rose for coming in and providing some good content as well. You're all beasts. Uh, I will have some content up tomorrow on Patreon as well, so look for that. Uh, Jody on uh, sent me an email and said the stock won't change, Joe. That's what he believes. Probably has some knowledge of stocks more than I do. So there you go. And uh, everybody else, if I missed your comments or whatever's, I will talk about it tomorrow, man. It's going to be a big day tomorrow probably as well. So thank you so much for that, man. I am pumped up about Star Trek uh, Season 3 of Picard, even though Season 1 and 2 of Picard are garbage. Uh, but, you know, hey, hopefully it's not garbage. But if it's garbage, then that's just sad, man. Let's hope they save... Oh, man, I hope they don't ruin Star Trek completely, dude. It's already a mess, so I'm a little worried about that. Let's take it away on the way out, Ryback. And the fuck over. Um, um, but no, he still didn't want to do that. Like, I uh, sent him a message and just personally let him know the other day that I'm going to personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy if he doesn't get fired before that and enjoy the ride short term that he's up there. So, And I know the, his buddy wants to say you're supposed to be a motivational seeker, or, uh, speaker and be positive. I am. But there, I, I'm also, I don't put up with little bitches. And I'm a fighter at the end of the day. And if a guy's going to run his mouth and... Pat was running his mouth to other promoters, is speaking ill of me that I'm, that I'm an asshole and that I'm horrible to work with. All I say is ask any promoter I've ever worked for what the story was, and you're not, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. It. These people robbed his buddy KM and fucking Pat and all these other crew of guys were doing homosexual wrestling activities with an old man and robbed him of nearly a million dollars, which they joked about it 
oh, it was never anything. I've heard what was going on with those guys and what they were doing. And the guy eventually passed away, Bob, the wizard, as they called him. Bob, the grand wizard of the Nazis. Talked about it. Oh, it was never anything. I've heard what was going on with those guys and what they were doing. And the guy eventually passed away, Bob, the wizard, as they called him. And it was talked about on this show, who I always would, I never understood any of that. I go, I always told him it was fucked up when we would talk off the air, that they would go and perform weird wrestling moves on this old man and and took him of all his money over a matter of years. I'm just going to present you guys with facts. What kind of human being, if you're going to do that kind of shit, that you're, you're, you're fucked up. And I had nothing against people that how their sexual preference or anything like that, but they robbed this man of all. When's the last time you talked to Pat, like I- and the fuck over. Get down, shut up. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing to me, bro? Oh, in there, I'm having a the trolls out the woodwork tonight. <laughs> Okay, well, it sounded uh, like you. Yeah, it's not me. So don't, because I will sue you. No. If you say that that was me, I was listening to the show. Mm. I was minding my own business, okay? Mm. I was minding my own business. And then you bring up my name like I'm fucking calling you. No. I'm not calling you. Don't pretend that I call you or that I talk to you. I don't. I'm watching, and that's about it. I'll take you to court. All mm. right? Okay. And I will finish it. If I have to, okay. Mm, okay. I, put things, I, I will put. I'll pick you up and I'll put you down on a fucking bit of spikes. Yeah. <laughs> so can I? Can I, can, uh, can I swear to God, I have only called you one time. Okay. Now. All right. No, say that. Say it after me. I only called one time. Okay, you only called one time. <laughs> you're you're damn right. You're t- now what I want you to do right now. If you could do it for me, I would really be appreciative. Do it. I would really appreciate it. Could you say, um, could you say Grundle for me? Grundle. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. By the way. <laughs> Can I get oh a naked God, picture? I fucking, after Danny MT kills Joe Cronin and his family, I'm going to fuck his family. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Awesome. Me. More. Put a picture of me on the fucking screen right now. Come on, do it. I swear to God, you're going to fucking rue the day that you talked about me, Joe Cronin. And I'm going to seriously fucking crush your skull. Do you understand me? Yeah. What's that? What's that? It's the right back rap. What's that? What's that? Who's that? Yo, it's the Ryback Rap. What's that? Yo, who's that? What's that? What? Yo, it's the Ryback Rap. What's that? Get out the way. You're probably gay. Ryback Rap. How about that? I push your head into the mat and it goes flat. You're not ready for this shell shock And you got a tiny cock It's the Ryback Rap Ryback Rap Luis Antonio Alejandro crap. So how about that? 14 months Ryback Rap 14 Ryback months Ryback member rap. Thank Start you Talking shit you full of crap Luis Finish Show. it Finish this Finish it You're a bitch You're a bitch Yo, yo, it's the right back. This rap. is the greatest day in the history of the company. You're talking crap. Go to Amazon and buy my stash. The right back rap. 
I'm gonna crush your skull in a pit of spikes. It's the right bag rap. Yeah, it's the right bag rap. It's the right bag rap. Hey Pat Buck, I'm gonna fuck you up. It's the right bag rap. Don't talk back. If you do, yeah, your head will go splat. It's the right bag rap. Finish it, Shell Shock. Super man is what women call my dick. In the bedroom, it is large and in charge. Yeah, it's the right bag rap. Yeah, it's the right bag rap. I'm coming for that ass. Yeah, so join my fitness class. It's the right back rap. It's the right back rap.